You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Maybe do plugs early because I don't know where the fuck this is going to go. We, we have a, a, a round 20 we break and we can do, well, we'll do plugs at the end. Okay. This will go out Wednesday. Oh, yours, yours goes out Wednesday as well? Yeah. Funny. Uh, I think I came after you. When did you start doing this? I don't know, five years? Six and a half. We're in our seventh year. Yeah. Wow. Fucking flies by, doesn't it? 2013. 2012, I think. April 16th. Tracy, April 16th? Andy? The first one's July. unreasonable. July. I took it, it off. A, a Super Bowl or a Fourth of July party? Fourth of July party, I thought. Or a nope. Super Bowl party. When we did it up at... That's well, we right. did it. The first one was with Andy, so I don't know April. If, when that went out. Oh, I know my, we I've, taped it during a party. I buried my first one because it's fucking unlistenable because I didn't think anyone was listening. And we have a lot of those. Definitely. We, we, yeah. yeah, for the first year, we buried more it was a public, than we actually like aired. That. It was just everything, my issues with the industry and everything. Just bitter, twisted fucking... Uh, we are doing a swap cast, by the way. We're, yeah, we're, 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 we're recording. Name. Cross pollinating, I call it. Cross pollinating is, is more clever, but uh, I think uh, swap casting is more succinct. Yeah, uh, I'll enjoy you, I guess. Uh, I'm here with Doug Stanhope, uh, cult comic extraordinaire at his uh, on the Doug Stanhope podcast and the Dumb White Guy podcast with uh, me, Brandon Burns. Episode fucking who, who knows? Look at hey, look at this picture. What's going on with this? What's what this is that? Of? Oh, fucking Wikipedia, right? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Wikipedia. You can never trust Wikipedia because it's either written by I the trust comic. them. That same it's tattoo. It's either written by the comic or someone with a grudge. Your same tattoos on and your shoulder. And they will That's you. Uh, that's me All right. on the road touring with Mick Foley doing jokes about pro wrestling. The and wrestler playing- Mick Foley? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mankind? Yeah. He's yeah. a stand-up now. So that's a wig? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you reckon? You and I, every time I see you, we have the same fucking hairline. Yeah. And it's, it's gone. But I feel like- I- it does feel always like looking in the mirror a bit, <laughs> like alternate universe version of like. I think you're a better looking me, my friend. That's what uh, your missus said, I think, last time. <laughs> but the looks are fucking faded. Yeah, if, we, if Chad Shank were here, he would pile on this point: is we don't get by on our looks. No, no, and I don't. That's think like people funny. who get fucking hair plugs and shit. Really, I got hair plugs. I must admit. Uh, well, they didn't work. It. Didn't fucking work. How and long did they fall nightmare. out? Uh, they're still there. I mean, but the thing really? is, yeah, have a look. You can see the cunt. You can see the fucking <laughs> landing the, strip. You can not the not the landing strip. The actual fucking oh, front cunt. Oh, the cut. I thought you said yeah, the no, cunt. No, no, the cunt. I did. It's a, a, a it's a vaginal pubic hair gap. That they, yeah, it, it, can't it, they take it from it, somewhere else? Uh, <laughs> no, they take it from the back and they stick it in the front. And I have a massive <laughs> needle phobia. What fucking nightmare. I don't uh, uh, understand. Like, I did take Propecia in the 90s for a second. That's what, you know what? That's what happens when you give a fucking ex cokehead like me too much money and too much time. I'm like, well, I guess I'll buy my fucking hair back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just come down to Bisbee, Arizona, uh, where Doug lives, where he's got his, uh, Commune and uh, for his mate Matt Becker's gig, yep. which is this is the most Australian American place I've seen, and the people in this town are more Aussie, really, than they are. That was like an outback country pub last night. Well, you were you last night when you got here, you your statement was based clearly on what the club looked like, not on the people. You find that the people are also very outback Australian. Absolutely, they were wow. giving, they were warm, they appreciated the drive. Uh, I should I, introduce Chaley as well, who's been uh, Chaley. Sure. Yeah, that's Chaley. Chaley. Yeah. Saying it right, yeah. Uh, Doug's tour manager and and producer and of the podcast, for so many producing years. both of ours today. Yeah. Hey, I, I was catching up on your pod uh, on the way in. Who was the woman you had on? And you said she was your best friend, Catherine Bertine. Bertie. Bertie. Fucking Brian Hennigan doesn't get a fucking look in. Some woman <laughs> wanders into your life. The fucking guy who gave up stand up to fucking commit to your career. Oh no, they and gave up stand up. The audiences gave up his stand up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I have seen him do stand up. Bless him. But he's a funny fucking real life. Yes, absolutely. Funnier off than on, which is often hard to work. It's uh, yeah, it's a, a very common thing. 
uh, and, and now with uh, the internet, there's people that are hilarious on social media that can't say two words in a social setting. Oh my so it's God. a, it's like a third layer of, all right, I'm funny at the bar, but I'm not funny on stage. And there's funny on stage where they're not funny anywhere else. Did you see that Rob Delaney bloke no. doing a Conan set? Mm-hmm. And you were like, why wouldn't anyone put this out? Why would anyone watch late night fucking talk shows? <laughs> That's a fucking great point. Although some people are good at doing couch. Like you see like the occasional good couch spot that goes viral. But uh, you'd get that on a YouTube because they all post the, the best clips of their hour show. They put the seven minutes that are worth watching and you get it all right there. Or some cunt fucking, some fucking cunt, right? <laughs> some <laughs> cunt took the ending from So I Suppose without the reveal. Did it, that show I did with the, where I faked a racist argument with a plant? No. I, I In just, the crap. You were in Edinburgh that year, weren't you? I don't fucking remember Edinburgh. Really? Yeah. I, I, I remember like one joke of Glenn Wool's, and uh, that's pretty that? much it. From What's the Glenn Wool joke? The the one about uh, doing cocaine and, and, and a, a, yeah, and that's the last thing you want when you're hallucinating is confidence. confidence. <laughs> it's such a, I've quoted a number of times. So as good. Well. Like we sat around fucking j- uh, just uh, chopping around playing with that premise. Like I think a fucking whole evening. Of not like working on the bit, but just like, you know, when you're hanging out, it's like he's got a premise and it's just like, uh, what did he say? Yes, officer, now I'd like to try your hat. <laughs> uh, I'd like to try on your hat. But uh, he came up with a premise years ago. What the fuck is that? Hang on. Security cameras. You got security cameras? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you had a stalker, didn't you? X nay on the yeah. It's we we get we get some uh, fans with flavor, and sometimes that flavor is uh, odd. And you're a bit easy to find. That's my card. Yeah, yeah. I'm just recording the way. It's a two twelve Van Dyke Street, Bisbee, Arizona eight five six zero three. Whoa! Hang on. What? It's just a security camera. Burnsy. I know, but what the fuck are you doing, Koresh? What are you? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. We're trying not to be Koresh. Well, that's the- Well, the, you the, failed miserably. <laughs> uh, to explain this, I think Doug's finally got like his- Well, actually, every house I think you've ever had, you've had your own bar. He's got his own bar at the back of his place. There's like iron fences everywhere. Everything's super uh, colorful. And the, the, the bar is in the back, hence the need for security cameras. Like, all right, who's out front? You see the UPS guy come up, you go, oh, fuck, UPS is here, because otherwise you're not going to hear him. I can't stress enough, there's nine cameras, folks, and they're, Charlie's, like, s- scrolling through them. <laughs> of just uh, So I also completely underestimated the drive out here, because I needed to get out of LA and get some country in me. You're based out of LA now, right? Nah, kind of. My wife's a screenwriter, she's been here since November. I always wanted to break America anyway, but... It's kind of the f- my kid's twenty now, so it's the final frontier. Shh, I didn't even know you had a kid. Really? I haven't seen you since '06. Probably would have been the last time I I did Edinburgh the last time '06. So I don't know if I. Oh, I was fresh out of rehab, wasn't I? It was fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, well, I was, I, '06. I was. Yeah. I and I, the last I remember, I saw you over here, and that was probably '05 early. Greeners. No, when you were doing your your. Vegas thing. Yeah, the green room, and then you drove to green Vegas. Uh, 2012. Didn't you write a book about that yes. whole trip to, yeah. You- Fear of hat loss in Las Vegas. And there's two chapters on you. And you were at Playa del Rey when I, right before we moved to Bisbee. Yes, that's yeah. right. And literally, whenever you and I start to enter into the same circle, I have a bit of a mushroom DMT flashback. So I had fucking, I had to deal with a lot of crazy last night before I got on stage. It was like, uh, Becca, bless him as well, is, uh, more than happy to have us back. I'd like to bring a bunch of Aussies to that gig. It's, uh, cause it's very outback country pub. Chuckleheads. Chuckleheads. Yeah. It's very outback country pub. And I think anyone with too much polish wouldn't go over. I think like what, what I lack in polish, I made up for in a lack of polish. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, uh, Chaley, bless him, fucking. Like, really hurted me like a kitten. I'm normally a lot more functioning. Like, that's not... I'll raise my hand when I see it. Uh, when you see what? Me functioning? <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> no, no, you, you came in hot last night, and I can't imagine, like, 
going into a gig where you just got off the road, took a That's quick a shower, nine and a half hour drive. Yeah. Started the mushroom flashback because I did so many mushrooms in 05. He, he extended it though, Doug. He he stayed somewhere in Oh, he was in Yuma. Overnight. Yeah, and you, then it took him forever to get here. He was only three hours away and it took him all day to drive here. He got here at like seven thirty at oh, night. I was actually condo. I was gonna go to Yuma. Well, you emailed me from Yuma. You didn't yeah. say you were staying there. I said I was headed to Yuma, but then oh. I rang Yuma, <laughs> if you will. Uh, to try and book a hotel and they're all full or they wanted 200 bucks. I'm like, I'm not spending 200 yeah, yeah. bucks to fucking sleep for six hours in Yumi, you cunt. So I drove to Phoenix instead and then they didn't have room so I didn't get to bed till 4 or 5 a.m. And, the, and then here was way longer because I actually set off really early. And the you time. shouldn't go. You know not to go through Phoenix. There's the Gila Bend cutoff. I'll show you. Yeah. You're heading out tonight, right? Uh, Yeah, I'm going to drive through the night to get back. Uh, you, well, I guess you're sober now, which is another thing. Mm. You're deaf and sober now. So, uh, these are things. You, you, I just want the quick version because your listeners already know this. This is a swap cast, but for me. But this is brand new, right? Is that I did a lot of mushrooms in 05, handed it, smuggled 10 kilos into Glastonbury Festival. Uh, to hand it out to the audience. Oh, I, re- I remember you were doing those mushroom shows. It was the worst fucking. How, how worst, ma- imagine your worst nightmare on mushrooms. Was it was a year to the day that I'd found out my ex fiance uh, was seeing another guy in South Africa, and I was going to ring her up. It was so saccharine and trite as well. <laughs> That's the most embarrassing bit about it. <laughs> a year to the day I found out about it, and I was going to ring her live from stage to forgive her in a vain attempt to prove that God existed. Ugh. And I spent. I wrote a fucking poem. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, I was under the delusion I was shitting Rembrandts at the time, you know, so put no effort into it. I wrote a fucking poem, all of 30 seconds. It was straight out of teen angst. <laughs> and uh, at the last minute on the Sunday when I hand out the mushrooms and the mushrooms have kicked in, Paul Provenza was uh, documenting it, filming. So he's filming it. Oh. And he comes up and he goes, uh, Brennan, in the middle of my set. Uh, and he goes, Brennan, she's blocked your number. <laughs> Which is probably the best thing that could happen. And then after that, I just had like a year-long nervous breakdown, just kept on throwing loads of mushrooms onto it. And uh, and I've heard from people that have done DMT. I did DMT as well and a lot of hallucinogens. And you know how they say you can expand your mind. But who was it? Mac Lindsay had a good joke. Yeah, you can expand your mind, but expand it too far and it fucking snaps. <laughs> and You get stretch marks. That's why I can't commit to, yeah, fuck yeah, I still have them. Yep. Coupled with, I didn't realize this until only recently, major ADHD, there's a dent at the back of my head. Uh, I know a lot of people claim they've got ADHD, but I'm pretty sure Charlie will uh, bear witness to it. Fuck I it. mean, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I'd, bet, I'd bet on it. Uh, and they said, like, are you forceps birth? When I went and got it diagnosed, and he goes- Are uh, you what? Uh, forceps. Forceps. Uh, uh, they, they clamped your head. They clamped my fucking head. If you feel the back of my head, it's flat. And I said, yeah, I broke my mum's pelvis on the way out. Fuck yeah. That's how I roll. <laughs> Big head. I smash cunts. Take uh, that. <laughs> and uh, how else do you do my accent? <laughs> fuck yeah. I fucking love to fuck. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he goes, uh, yeah, you were forced birth? Uh, I said, yeah. And he goes, when did you get like a cocaine or amphetamine addiction? And I went, how do you know that? He goes, it's textbook. You're self-medicating because your left hemisphere can't communicate with your right hemisphere. So then you fucking throw mushrooms and DNT and all sorts of hallucinogens onto that and you can invent shit and it goes into your memory. So I can live in complete delusion, make something up, and then I remember it. And the weird thing was, I think around about the time, when I, when you and I met was the last time it was fun. Yeah, I, I've I've bailed off of uh, hallucinogens. Uh, yeah, okay. but I've been thinking. In fact, on this last tour, I go, "Fuck, I have to do mushrooms again," because I'm just like my my thinking is stale. I, even like microdosing, which everyone's talking about, I should probably do that a little bit. Make sure you're happy. Yeah, well, that's what never happens. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting. Uh, here's the weird thing, folks, as well, is that whenever I'm around Doug, I or I can sometimes tell when Doug's just been somewhere because I have like a weird mushroomy flashback. And when I drove in last night and it wasn't like – these days it only happens during positive events, like it happened on my wedding day. Oh, yeah, I got married. Uh, and 
Uh, I assume that by when you said your wife is a s- screenwriter. Uh, aren't we fucking <laughs> pirates? Isn't it funny? Like, I'm going to have to do something that I had to do uh, on stage in uh, Brea, uh, where because of all these people in my life that are positive influences that keep telling me to hydrate, I had to leave stage to take a piss and make Brendan Walsh come back up and do a bit. So I go go piss in the green room. And I'm going to have to go piss right now. So that just you so, keep going. I'll, I'll tell you. I, the, I pissed beforehand. Yeah, I know. I should have. I'll, t- I'll tell you. I planned this. Doug, go right now. This is the thing. is On tour with Doug, we always share the same room, right? And I always wanted to get a video of in the morning. I wake, I sleep like a mummy. Wait a minute, hang on. <laughs> you share a room yeah. and you don't get a look in on the best friend fucking <laughs> stats? Who the fuck? What's wrong with you? It's a business relationship. So I, I sleep like a mummy and I wake up early, right? It's a fucking parental like, relationship. So I wake up and I always yeah. hear when he gets up, he's a curmudgeon and you don't want to talk to him. I want to, I want like the, the staff to somehow interact with them because then he unloads all his vitriol there. But the first thing he does, he's, since he, he never pisses at night on stage, he st- does his whole set, drinking the whole time. And then we go out and do merch, never takes a leak. In the morning, I always wanted to, to just run camera of him walking past the camera, and you see the back of the back of him at the urinal, and just run a clock that he's just unloading basically eighteen uh, hours of piss. I, uh, but th- those were the beer drinking days. Yes. I've, I've switched. Really I've switched yeah. to cocktails now. But the beer I drinking say, days. That's bizarre. That- I would time them. I'd like over two two and a half minutes. Because I drive myself everywhere as well. Like I, so I got like a trucker <laughs> ladder. But I, if I'm going to do anything that's intense, like an OCD, I cannot go on stage without pissing a minute before they say my name. <laughs> that's Lynn Shawcroft. Right. Lynn Shawcroft has the same thing. Yeah, she gets his, gets, gets a wee thing where she's got to cross her legs, and it, she sometimes she'll go to try and piss, and she doesn't have to. It's just a nervous thing. Right, it's before not that you, go you on. need to. It's that you could. Yes. Which sometimes when you go in some right way. before I go on stage, I always uh, have to uh, think, "Wow, I should have put a set together." <laughs> oh my god, you think you're shitting Rembrandts? <laughs> Me too. I've been guilty. No, now it's a memory thing. Oh really? Yeah. So then sometimes, but that's okay. For I like it when your brain tricks you, and then you go into something, and you're like, "Why am I starting this bit?" But oh, so bring me back to uh, whenever I'm around. Doug, or sometimes when we've just been in the same vicinity, things get a bit mushroomy uh, or DMT-ish. And anyone that's done DMT, they there's two experiences. You know, people say, it's oh, it's aliens, man, and we discovered that this is a cartoon and an illusion. And the thing is, it just depends how happy you are with the cartoon. I've had this, uh, yeah, discussion with Rogan many a times. It, you do it and you see a whole new world, and I see a whole new world that, but I'm still fucked and stuck in this one. <laughs> I've just, yeah, it's not like, a, yeah, and almost like, but also it's an example of we're fucking this up. We are fucking this up royally. This is, this simulation is the shit joke one. This simulation's fucking hack. <laughs> fucking Schwarzenegger as governor? Fucking how hack? Fucking Trump as president? Like, get an idea. Fucking give us, like, you know, someone wacky. Not like, uh, just like, you know how people are like, oh, you couldn't write this shit. Yeah, you fucking could. Oh, I fucking hate that oh. expression. You couldn't make this stuff up. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, maybe you're not clever because <laughs> I can make up way better shit. Or just change your behaviors. And so, yeah, sometimes like, you know how like when you change your behaviors and you go somewhere different, that's when extreme coincidences occur, which is why we're kind of like pirates. There's only a handful of pirate comics on the planet, but you're like, you go off to sea and you come back and it's like, oh, I got married and had a kid. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> You're here now, right? And uh, consequently- I love that. Uh, Pirate comics. I had, for the first time in ages, a mushroom reality strip away flashback as I drove into Bisbee last night because Bisbee's already a bit trippy. Once you go through that tunnel, you're like, what the fuck, fuck is, is this? this? Yeah. That's how we found it. And then 14 years later- and. The thing is, the DMT version of the hallucinogens and the fucking retarded brain that I'm trying to, you know, keep on focus, uh, uh, it 
Oh, I used the R word, didn't I? Fuck, you know, but I am. So fuck you. I called me it. And, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's part of your culture. Well, I'm missing as long as we, are, fucking, as long as we don't do cultural appropriation of your words, but oh, where you're from. For fuck's sake. Those, those fucking white woke cunts. Okay. You'll love it. This fucking those, like, if you're white and you declare yourself woke, you just do, do appropriate someone else's culture and you did it in the cuntiest way imaginable. Because woke used to mean, sorry, listeners, I've said this on my show a few times, but it's for your, Go ahead. uh, is, uh, that, Woke used to mean is it a, is a it's a black American or Afro Caribbean American term that means stay woke, look out, you are prey in this world. Put your hand on the steering wheel and you get pulled over. Don't run in a hoodie. There's a fucking million ways for you to die. And fucking white cunts, fucking pseudo liberal, fucking so lacking in altruism, white cunts stole the word, declared themselves woke, and changed it to mean everyone else is in the dark but me. Fuck you! And then I went on uh, Race Wars. Oh, Yamanika, we'll get into that in a sec, in a pin. Uh, oh, 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 Yamanika, the comic? Yamanika, we'll get into that. Uh, that's yeah, the yeah, cow. Yeah. Put a okay. pin in that. Because oh, yeah. uh, she's, she's good people, man. She's good people. <laughs> and I listened to it. She and, loves Doug. And I have the <laughs> utmost faith that when I give you the objectivity on it, you're going to go, oh, yeah, that's fucked. Uh, is, uh, so I did that on Race Wars. And then a couple of people messaged me because it's quite a popular podcast. And I did it on a couple of podcasts here and it started popping up and other people started kind of doing the bit, but it's kind of an opinion. How can you own an opinion? But it was almost worded exactly the same. And that really fucked me off, which means as a human being, oh, I, f- I want, cha- I know, but as a human being, I want change, but weirdly as a comic, I want credit more. <laughs> so. I- I, I, I say that a lot because once once you think you're the first person to put put something out, I, I I implore comics. Listen, if I ever like die and get like Bill Hicks, don't avoid the fucking important premises because one guy did it that's revered. Those are important things. No one's you know saying that often enough. Like the jury duty bit that wasn't funny is the most important bit I ever did. Taking jury duty is way more important than voting. And I did a, a, a 2004, I did a bit about it, but it wasn't that funny. It wasn't something that, you know, gets viral. So steal that fucking premise and rewrite it. And I, I, I'm wholly behind you on putting that out there. That should be the hackneyed premise instead of whatever the, the current one is Fuck now. Man, look at who was the guy you were counting off the other week? Uh, Malasco, Manalco, bloody oh, physical so, dude. That. Yeah. Uh, the, the, did I do that on a podcast? American yeah. Psycho. I did that on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. I should. I, I don't like to fucking shit on comics. It's hard for people to make a fucking living. You grow up after a while, like, and also you're kind of the man. You are the man. <laughs> and when you're the man. I'm sorry, Sebastian Maniscalco. I know you've had a hard road and you've, you've, you've put in a lot of hours and I just, just not for me. And I need uh, yeah, a comic to use as an example for my audience. Yes. Well, like when people bitch about the ticket price, you know, you know how much Larry the cable guy is charging? Some yeah. of my audience wouldn't By the necessarily. Way, that becomes hack of who to pick. Like we had Michael McIntyre in the UK and you'd have open micers. Shitting on Michael McIntyre going, he sucks. And I'm like, oh, really? Try following him on a Thursday in Cardiff before he was famous and tell me how shit he is. Killing is hard. You know, it's like, oh, look at what that guy's killing with. Well, then the you UK, can do it. The UK was the hardest where I, if I had a bit where I needed an example of a shitty comic, there's almost no crossover. So if I said, you know, I, Larry the Cable Guy was a moment, there was all, there was always someone, and I've been, I, I've been living here for 14 years, but in the UK, like I, they'd go. Uh, well, Michael McIntyre is the guy that everyone goofs on. And I'd he's go, a good comic, but he, he's it, it would be disingenuous for me to act like I know him. So I was, I was so thankful for Russell Brand crossing over <laughs> into the states, where now I have someone I legitimately don't like that works in both places. Swaggery, rapey beekeeper. Ooh, yeah, he's, <laughs> he he uh, was a judge on the oh this. Uh, because this we could of, only like, hope we, well we have to watch shit in the uk because we have libel laws uh, but oh, yeah. on when he was a judge on roast battle and i was helping uh some comics with that no one was allowed to roast him 
Do you know who had the same thing? Uh, or I, I, I don't know. This might not be accurate, but when they did the roast of Dennis Leary, uh, was don't say he ripped off Bill Hicks. I don't know if that was a rule or they just edited out everyone who did go that way. They- well, admittedly, on the Roast Battle UK one, the producers on the first- Oh, well, Roast Battle. Roast right. Battle yeah. UK yeah. was- I think it was a lot of people that had come from reality TV and they didn't understand the difference between roasting and genuine conflict. So they were, like, saying shit. They were bitching, like, saying shit that someone else said about the other. And the thing is, it doesn't really work if there's an axe to grind. Unless someone's braggadocious. That's yeah, why I would be, place. I would be horrible at roast battle because, or, or, or a comedy central roast because I'd just come up with mean shit to say that's not funny. <laughs> that's my failing when like, I don't know these people. I can't. I, and also, like, I end up inadvertently bragging. Well, that's how I wound up moving here finally as well, was I did, uh, just give me a quick recap because people know you, but uh, so you got sober when? Oh, okay. Uh, 2006 when we first met, relapsed in 2009, haven't had a drop since. All right. And then, but you've been in the UK until just Actually, recently? On the international scene. All this right. podcast is Dumb White Guy. It's because I was going to different countries and coming up with new 20 minutes. Are you the Tom Rhodes of the UK? Uh, Doing no, a- Tom Rhodes is the man. He's, he's another pirate, but even us internationals who, and I, and by, you know, there are people that are tour, that tour overseas, but like when Bill, when you say international, it's not, we're not talking Canada. Uh, (laughs) You guys, uh, I know Tom Rhodes is like fucking Koala Lumpur or some shit. Tom Rhodes is the man. Like we're all pussies compared to him. Yeah. That he went on the road for 10 years, put his stuff in storage. I had him on my show only the other week and I even said like, he's the man. When some people go like, Shit, you're doing Malaysia one week and you're in Kuala Lumpur, you're in China, you're in Estonia, you're in whatever. Um, and, uh, I'm going to try and put together some Africa shows as well or South Africa. Jesus. We did the South, uh, the second ever, I was, I was at the second ever South Africa festival five years after the end of apartheid. At the time, I didn't realize what it was. Now looking back, like Africa is pretty cool. South Africa, South Africa. in Cape Town. <laughs> yep. Which is like the liberal, uh, yeah. well, that's- area of South Africa. And by the way, a South African liberal. Has no time for political correctness. <laughs> They're like, I smuggled guns so I could fuck a black woman. What did you do, you stupid cunt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you got upset on Twitter? Oh, you called that proactive. I smuggled guns for the ANC so I could stick my penis in a black woman. Uh, wow, that fucking went all, that accent didn't commit, did it? Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, well, you already have a different one anyway, so we are, we wouldn't know. Oh, I was I last week's show. I had a guy called uh, Tatenda Mutsi, uh, a Zimbabwean filmmaker, doing stand up here, and he got up trying to do a character, and I said, "You can't, mate, not in America, because you're already a character." <laughs> <laughs> and the weird thing is, all us foreigners here really stick together because it's here more than any other country in the world. Maybe Japan, uh, like like. We're gaijins. Like, we're just foreign. Just foreign. Be foreign. What? You also have a relationship? Like, the, there's no concept whatsoever of how other countries relate to one another. It's just how do they relate to the states? That's it. And he got up and tried to do a character and just everyone was like, what? No. What? The Zimbabwean guy doing a character? No. Look, you're already a cartoon. You're already not real. You don't exist. You come from a made-up country and you've got the funny accent. And because a Zimbabwean accent from a Catholic school sounds kind of English, he again was doing the roast battle uh, show at the comedy store and just even the judges, the comedian judges, just interrupted him, just started yelling at him, going, stop doing this fake accent bullshit. Your fake African accent's pissing me off. And the black guys were going, you put on an African accent, shitting me. I'm like, first of all, mate, Africa ain't a country, right? <laughs> Second of all, there's more cultures, languages, countries, uh, and, and, uh, ethnicities and. Uh, yeah. During this podcast, two countries have just changed names in Africa. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's more culturally diverse than any other fucking continent. And it's just Africa. <laughs> and you're like, you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah, you know, but, uh, and I was saying to him, you can't do a character here, like, cause we are, we're already, you know, there's no, like, it just, people can't fathom it. And, uh, 
Like I'm already like. Well, yeah. If you if you played Zimbabwe and you went into a Fargo accent from your usual Southern accent, I, I still don't know of you know, you know Liverpool versus. Like really? Those, you yeah. can't spot a Liverpoolian one? That's pretty strong, though. But I wouldn't know what all it right. is. All right, you fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're the funniest people uh, every, in the world. When I play the UK, they'd say, who, who are your favorite? Because uh, at that point, all the comics I knew were from the Fringe Festivals, 02, 04, 06. Those are the ones I did. And they'd go, who's your favorite uh, British comics? And I'd... Go, oh, so and so, oh, he's Australian, so and so. Yeah, we're all far. He's our Irish. <laughs> I, I think and we might Jimmy Carr, I think, is the only one I know that's British, he's, actually. He's Irish. Well, is he? <laughs> yeah, he puts the accent on. Oh, all right. He, uh, he, uh, he changed, he was a game changer, actually, because we were all pill heads. Like, we'd just go up and fucking, it was rock and roll. They'd like, comedy was the new rock and roll, as they said. It, it was in Edinburgh. Woo! And in the 90s, ecstasy was... And I realized I was too old to rock and roll even back (laughs) then. I remember seeing Glenn Wool coming back on... uh, It was his third day awake. And he was on his way to do a children's show. (laughs) And he said he had to take ecstasy to stay awake. (laughs) He did it! He was lying down the entire time. <laughs> and he just goes, hello, boys and girls. Do any of you boys and girls out there have a lonely mommy? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, tell me, do you have a lonely mommy who likes gin? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, he's doing the whole thing on his back. He just goes, boys and girls, don't get married. Right? And the organizers got so upset with him. But anytime you do the kids show, just don't say fuck or cunt. And you can do whatever. And the kids loved it because it's just a... Wait, this wasn't a backyard party? This was like... No, no, this was a scheduled show during the festival. It's the comedy club for kids. And the the barrier really, if you're working edgy in the comedy club for kids, the thing that you fuck with is the dynamic between the mum, the dad, and the kid. So you let the kids run over, you know, uh, take over, and the place goes nuts. Yeah. Um, But, so that's 2006. So that was my first Edinburgh back... After rehab, after all the DMT, the mushrooms, the delusions and everything. Uh, pretty broken, quite an open wound, I think, at the time. And uh, and then also, because you've been in a mental institution, because I even got sectioned in the mental institution. So, because inside a mental institution, there's another mental institution. And uh, I said this on last week's show, sorry. but they, they That's all right. About, you know, I, I have way more listeners. So yeah. Do you? No, I don't have any idea. I was just being a prick. Uh, do you? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Don't you? You must know, Charlie. Do you? I know everything. Do you? Yeah. Right. Okay. I don't know what you know. <laughs> About your listeners. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I don't go and look at other people's listeners. We They're happy that I'm talking. happy to hear this. Yes. Yeah. Again. Oh, so I need to intro you better as well. So Doug Stanhope is, I suppose, like uh, in the the... U.S. You're 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 definitely one of the be- the the best examples of a hybrid. I think like you're born of festival circuit, but also comedy club. And then you, I based my business model on yours since 2015, and actually I, in the post boom period uh, in the is, UK. Is this a post boom? This hold on in the period post boom in the UK. Yeah, but oh. you 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 just meld the the explanation of who Doug is with you used the business model that he developed back in 2005. Yes, that's right. I, okay. I, I, will I, I thought you just kind of glossed over one to, to bridge to the other. For both our listeners... Uh, you, you're not the well, hang, hang on. For both our listeners, you have to understand, I have been living down here in the middle yeah. of nowhere for 14 years. So I see almost no stand-up comedy. I don't go to festivals. Huh. If I go to the comedy store, it's like a high school reunion, and I've... But I don't know anything that's going on as far as boom or not boom. Exactly. I just know if I'm fucking selling tickets. Yeah. So th- I wasn't bridging that way at all. I no, I just say that the, the, the I think without saying you're incorrect, and that's what you, that's your impression is. He's a road comic. He yes. started on the road. That's where I'm going. And with this. that's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, because when I hear festival, that is he no, no, runs. He I runs said, from festival. I said hybrid. 
That's true. I, I've, 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 I've I done some festivals so, that went wait, poorly. Wait. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, you were very admired at festivals. You were beloved immediately. Oh, okay. You I'm were t- embraced. I, so I, I immediately went back to music festival. Like, I couldn't do a Bonnaroo comedy tent. I did Leeds and Reading. Oh, and they uh, fucking, fucking booed me up. the one up in Amsterdam, stick too. You up there eight years earlier, and you would have fucking crushed. But it was millennials and like, why is the nasty man being? What? No, I, once I, once I went on after you that day, I think and there's a video of actually me getting people to throw bottles at a guy. <laughs> Someone threw, they were, th- but they were plastic empty water bottles. Yeah. And then at the all- end, Someone threw an apple core because I was like, "Go ahead, throw shit. I don't give a fuck." And someone threw an a apple core at me, and that's how I closed. I ate the core. <laughs> yeah, and then you said, "What kind of pussy crowd throws plastic bottles?" And yeah, we're not allowed glass. This is the UK. We'll fucking stab each other. So where I was going with that is he's yeah. the hybrid of the road comic and festival comic. Right. In that. Uh, he's got the strength of bits in that every bit is going somewhere and has beats and punchlines and so on, but also knows how to structure an hour instinctively, uh, like writing to premise. Like the bits, your bits are longer than most, uh, because you have a, a, a very unique viewpoint premise. Like I could guarantee that if you were to go down like your albums, whatever bit is titled, is not what it is in your head whatsoever. Yeah, we we've uh, just went through this where like I have a chunk. You know, the, if you put out a, a physical product, they want to break it up into tracks. Yeah. And the last album, Mental Illness, is one track. It just veers off and comes back, and that's like twenty two minutes. And they act like this is nineteen seventy where we can't play a twenty two minute hear a track. Single. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Find you <laughs> fucking with the marketplace here, I can't believe I can't any American comic that like first of all of your skill set was your parents happened to fuck here, right? Don't be swaggering around going, We're the best in the world. No, some of you are the best in the world. You just happen to be near them. Uh, uh, like I could drop you anywhere on this fucking planet and you'd get killed. But that's every country. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, or, or district or province yeah. or oh, down God, yeah. to neighborhoods. Yeah. Even in this, there's Bisbee is 5,000 people and I think we have 13 suburb town names or, 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 or sections. Like neighborhoods. The, yeah, this is, I did not expect this to be in a neighborhood. I'm they say, oh, well, this is Warren. We live in Warren. Yeah. He lives uh, in a suburb of Bisbee, Arizona, which is also a historic landmark because it's an old mining town and it's the stop back. Stop gap between Los Angeles and Texas. Is that right? Well, we're it seven, was. and we're seven miles north of the U.S. Mexican border. Yes, and and I I do have to say that I don't know if Doug you saw this on the cameras, but you you couldn't. He Brandon when he got here, he was dry, He drove up the street, and what we saw him on the cameras, he turned around, and I went out to go take a leak, and he's yelling. As he's driving down the street. Uh, hey, 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 what's weird about that? And we wouldn't have heard that, but we saw you on security cameras. <laughs> you see? All right, I think we have to take a break. So remember where we were. 20 minutes ago, we should take a break, but I, right. love, I love the energy here. And, yes. Uh, this is going to be quick. Right. We're going to be right back. All right, yeah, okay, uh, break and uh, and cocktails. <laughs> Well, don't I feel like a cunt. G'day, listeners. Doug's listeners. Brendan Burns here. Yes, I've since discovered they get way more listeners. Or you get way more listeners. Or there's way more of you. I don't know. I was doing my utmost not to uh, turn Doug's face into the Black Hole Sun music video at the time. Staving off a (laughs) schizophrenic attack. Anyway... Uh, I did a shitty job of explaining what our podcast is. It's called Dumb White Guy. We travel around the world interviewing comics of different ethnicity, sexuality, and gender to me and asking them Dumb White Guy questions. And I try and put up sets from around the world on the international scene where I'm the only white guy in the room. And I guess where there's a parallel is it's an ongoing narrative. So if you pick up the show from now, it won't make any fucking sense. Go back and listen to... I guess Big Brendan and Little Luke's Outback Adventures. Or was that what that was called? Asian Adventures with Nick Sun. Road to Estonia. Closing the Chasm with Craig Quartermain. Or you can even check out the story of Dumb White Guy on Pippa.io or Acast, I think, across the US. Oh, go to BrendanBurns.net. Uh, don't be a cunt about it. All right. 
Uh, I should be back <coughs> doing that Matt Becker gig sometime in July. I don't know. I'll put it up soon. Anyway, back to the pair of us talking shit. Have you ever been arrested for driving while intoxicated? What you gonna do? Then Kevin Brown is the lawyer for you. Hey, what am I doing over there? Jibbing out. You could pulling me over for what? I'm gonna call my attorney. What's his name again? If you've ever been inebriated, then Kevin Brown will take your case. Come to Kevin Brown. He'll get you off. Get back to my motherfucking... I'll call my attorney. You, you're going to tase me? I'll tase you, motherfucker. Kevin Brown. He'll tase you with the law. I was, uh... uh, uh I listen to satellite radio. I don't know if I'm the only one, but there's there, there, there's a commercial for a, a life insurance company. I did that whole bit on the Pop Off Vodka Presents. I don't know if anyone actually uh, bought that, but there's some good material on. So you get it on iTunes. We have the VHS version for funny, but that's just kind of. I think that's just one of the bits. Pop Off Presents. Yeah, on yeah. the VHS the that we VHS. put out. The collector's item. Yeah, that's, but, uh. Signed and numbered. But in that bit, I talk about, uh, whore voice on satellite radio commercials and it's like whores and adamandeve.com. We have a gift so naughty. We can't mention it. <laughs> During Howard Stern, really? You can't mention. So that was the bit, <laughs> but there's, now there's a bit for a, a commercial. For a fucking health insurance company that adds in whore voice. Hey, if you just answer four questions, honey, we can get a life insurance What's quote. Whore voice? Is it like whispery? Like, it's a, hey. Well, it's that. Oh, if you adamandeve.com a, a is. gift so naughty. Oh, what? Your, your postman will have an erection putting it in your box. But that's a. <laughs> but, but that's for a, a dildo company. So it makes, it, at least it makes sense. Come on, give me that laugh. Come on, Doug, give me that laugh. You're too used to him. Bernsey, this, this is a life insurance where they, like, put sexuality into. Leave where, something to your friends and family and kids. No, no, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, the sitcom, like, you know how they, unnecessarily do commercials where they write a play. Oh. Honey, do you know we could get life insurance oh, in, and they make like just I'm about so the fed up with in, these cell phones. Wait, you don't have a Maris phone, do you? Because that's an easy phone to use. So this one is for how quickly you can get a quote for life insurance. I just got one. And uh, you $59 just... $59 a month for me. You, <laughs> Which I worry about. Sorry. I got my rental car insurance. Let me just finish this. There's, Come on, there's a fucking dumb thing so we can get back to it. Yeah. It's, they go, oh, and you just answer four questions and then afterwards, well, if we just got life insurance that quick, what are we going to do with the rest of the night? Oh, no. oh, oh I don't know. We'll think of something. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. What's that? Oh, I thought we were going to have to spend all night getting life insurance and not be able to fuck. <laughs> like they, they're putting fucking into a life insurance. <laughs> now with this extra time and and no stress, so stronger erections, you can chuck it up me until I fucking tap chuck out. out. <laughs> chuck one up us, Trev. <laughs> Oh, ethos no. ethosinsurance.com so you can spend the rest of the night sucking a cock <laughs> so get a so fucking stick one up you fucking <laughs> so Australia would just you must have noticed like that's the hack thing that foreigners do when they go to Australia for the first time is they talk about like how cheap the adverts are and it's like at late night it's just a bloke with a shop yelling oh so it's like oh, I'm married I've got a shop fucking come on 
<laughs> like a bloke, there's Ken Bruce has gone mad. It's just a bloke with a shot, and he's like, God, Ken Bruce has gone mad. Look, I've got fucking couches and shit. Right? And, and everyone comes there just go. So anytime anyone comes there, like, that's a major network. Like, and it's like, this guy's advertising going, Come on down to Kev's warehouse. I've got fucking washing machines and fucking look at that. She's got some tits. Yeah. I love to fuck. <laughs> That's like, that would definitely be an Aussie ad of just the short version of that was, would be fucking Brian's health insurance. Go fuck. <laughs> Start fucking. Um, but where was I going? Oh, yes. Yeah, so Doug I, is, I think, instinctively like the perfect example of a hybrid. Of, he writes to premise because a lot of people are under the impression that International festival comics. Uh, there are a lot of theme shows. I want to back you up for a minute. Yeah. Once that, like, uh, uh, the Edinburgh years, and as that went, once I started to develop an audience, I would play to my audience. I know what they're going to listen to. So I don't do spots at the comedy store. I haven't for, you know, many years, 15 years. I don't do comedy seller. I play only to the people that pay money to see me that know it. So for me to go into a festival, any kind of like music festival, mixed bill show where they don't know me, yeah, it's it's not going to fucking work. Because the opener you, it requires trust. Like you open with a lot of bits that most people would put in at 45, where you've established a trust and a rapport with the audience. But it's like they already know me. It's like if I'm you're sitting in a fucking here. tent at oh. Bumble Shoot or whatever no, the Lowlands fuck it is in, in Amsterdam. Oh my god! When we went there. People would get let's get out of the sun for a little bit. They come in and they have you doing On the, your the, material. They, they're just trying to like sit down and have a drink, you know, it, without it being you know the the rat race of a of a big huge. My festival. my, my, the my trust notoriously don't react until no. the headliner. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> they famously, but if you tell them, don't do that, they yeah. then go, oh, well, then perhaps we should laugh and clap. That's why I, uh, I just work, uh, the fucking great comedy club there in Amsterdam. It's tiny. Tumblr. It's the yeah. shit. Yes. Everyone Be- loves it. But those people know who I am and my bit, uh, my, my, my act over the years has become like a, a, a series basically. Like, yeah, you, you probably know. Who Bingo is. You know these people. So, yeah. like a sitcom, like you get That's used to the characters. Anything. Yeah. I mean, I've never even heard you talk about this, but it is kind of right because at the merch booth, people will ask about like people Castle Rock Kenny. You. People will you be know? taking photos with you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I look pretty good when I'm at, on tour. Do you? Oh, I'm dressed up. You dress up, baby? But they will ask about characters. Like, not Mark, many men your age could pull off blue hair. Well, let, let's, we'll call it blue. The, well, that's uh, not blue. Wait, what, when what, he's on tour, it's what, blue. What version of <laughs> oh, you? It better be blue. If, if I get in that tour van and my hair's not blue, Stan Hope has some fucking words for me on the way to Amarillo. I, I'll tell you that right I now. I can't tell whether you're fucking with me or not. No, but, we're not. Uh, <laughs> right, really? It's well, be we both fun. dress in silly fucking vintage suits and Chaley ties his tie real short and I tie mine too long. Now, the reason you wear a costume to work, is that like- Costume? Yeah, is that like- uh, Yeah, it's a costume. It's a costume. It's not a costume. He dresses like Doug, he dresses like Doug Stanhope, the comedian character. He does. Look at it. I've fucking seen it in photos and shit and everything. It might be the outfit that you like, but it's still very similar every time. Look, just wait to see where I'm going with shit. I'm listening. Right, is- Is like I look at these cameras and the fucking fences- and uh, going out to the middle of nowhere, is there some fucking shield or mask there to protect yourself after the damages of DMT? And are you like frightened of this? I, I got no. I have an answer for you. When, I like you, you shitting well. Rembrandt's. Mm. When I like, I've for my whole career, I've gone through periods of wearing stupid shit. Uh, like I, there was a whole year in the nineties or two years, I wore a Santa hat for no reason. <laughs> and uh, uh, but the vintage suits kind of stuck. But I would wear dumb shit like. To, Chaley and I, there was a time I was wearing fucking vinyl Daisy Dukes in uh, Hollywood, <laughs> California with, yeah, the, with the one nut hanging yeah, out. Yeah. But when it, it really stuck is... I'm not belittling, by the way. I am so... No, I, I, I have an answer bit, yeah. uh, where I, I realized when I was in that period of I'm very important and I'm saying important things to wear something silly 
kind of offset that where I'm not fucking a guy in a suit that's railing on politics. I'm a guy in a fucking ridiculous 70s used car salesman suit. So I can, I feel like that like greater balances. License. It's greater license. It's like if there's an acceptance and an understanding of, okay, we all know I'm fucking ridiculous. Right? And, uh, and drunk. Yeah. And so if I'm like, I don't have to commit to any of this. Then you can say whatever the fuck. It's like Stuart Lee was saying, oh, Stuart Lee, the character, like said that. But he would just slagging off other comics, like even in print. And I was like, what are you doing in print, though, mate? And he's like- <laughs> Yeah, he Stuart slagged Lee. us off in print. Did he? Yeah, the I Unbookables. Like- when we did the Unbookables that year, 2006. Who's Stuart Lee? He's a uh, great UK he's a comic. comic. He's oh, brilliant. Yeah. He is. And, uh, but at some point, I think like he, he got too much critical acclaim and started pandering to that. And, and that, that adulation fucked with his head. I read that fucking book and it, uh, there's a, a thing where he says, uh, uh, they even came over with the show, The Unbookables, but you're being booked. Uh, well, it's American Unbookables. Yeah. People who can't get yeah, booked yeah. in America. Yeah. But also you'd like, mate, do you really want people starting to point out the inconsistencies in your stuff? But I don't know when he's kidding or not. I don't understand. Yeah. He's got a level of intelligence that I don't have, or a, he. I don't know when he's kidding or not. It's like hanging out with fucking stoners. I don't his know. La- his latest hour, it's amazing. He's gone back to what he's good at, and that's just being a brilliant fucking comedian. I never thought he was anything, but I just don't know it, 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 what the fuck with is. His fan base, half his fan base is cool, and the other half are cunts. They're like Rick and Morty, I, Rick and, Rick and Morty fans. I can identify with that. Oh, right, yeah. So, Hence the security camera. Yeah, I know. I'm just like, look at this. I've created a fucking uh, uh, Koresh environment. This, you're constructing your own death. So the move to Bisbee, like, so let's go back again. So Doug is definitely what I would call like one of the handful of, of pirate hybrids on the planet in that, yes, he's a rogue comic. Yes, he does bits but maybe not bitty bits so much anymore but Ari Shafir is a good example now as well his latest hour is fucking amazing because he took it to Edinburgh and was just just thought had the greatest attitude of I don't care about reviews nothing he did an hour after he did the double album uh yes he's done three hours at the Edinburgh and he worked out Edinburgh Festival way quicker than most a lot of people were trying to Go to paid venues, and paid venues are horrible now. Uh, everyone's gone to the free free. Uh, for for yeah. my listeners, American comedy goers in the UK, they do this Edinburgh Festival every year, Huge. and yeah. but 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 it's always a themed show, almost like a no, play. No, oh, is that different now? No, I would. I've worked out the difference. Is yes, there's theme shows, but that's people that aren't good. They're bad. That's people like trying to. And I realize now- It's only, it's been 13 years since I've yeah, been there, but- It's weird because it's like in the US, say like in New York, they're 15 years ahead in some respects and 15 years behind. Like in terms of structuring an hour, the US is 15 years behind because they like, they thought Nanette was groundbreaking. And it's like, no, it's an Edinburgh show. And not only that, it's the same Edinburgh show that everyone does at 10 years. Cause you've got to look at that system is that you have to come up with that shit in January. And then, uh, and then you are for also August. risking to be charged ten thousand pounds for it. You can fucking go into debt over it. Oh, that, what that, does that mean? Uh, uh, there was a famous story was Stuart Lee last time I was there again thirteen years ago, but where it, one of the bigger rooms he sold out every show and he got paid like twenty six pound <laughs> at the end. Oh, I yeah. don't know. Again, I that's a, a rumor, but a lot of us not- have migrated to the free fringe now. And it's just gotten to the stage where- Is that under Fringe? Free Fringe. Actually, I didn't realize as well. I did the first one uh, back in 96. My first ever Edinburgh Festival hour was the first, was the precursor to the Free Fringe. And the notion of the Free Fringe is you don't pay to get in and we don't pay to rent the room. And then at the end of the show, people hand money in a bucket. Now, the weird thing is, at the paid venues, if you're not like a big name, you will get handed a bill for ten thousand pounds. Oh! But if you put your ego to one side and you realise that you've got to beg for cash with a bucket at the end, and the place is packed, and the crowd's already rooting for you, and it's underground and it's punk rock, and it's it's a, a guy that was going to pay ten will think nothing of putting twenty if you made him Absolutely. piss himself laughing. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, there's no, there's no strong arm to it either. It's really kind of a. Like like the DIY kind of ethic. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's that's the model that I borrowed the DIY thing from you guys. Is uh, I was fucking miserable going to reputable comedy clubs 
complain to my fan base that I worked like fucking two decades to cultivate and there'd still be a cunt that I had spent money to try and market to that I wouldn't cross the street to piss on. And they ruined the show. And I, it was a fan that she said to me, and it's a, the last special we go into it, and I think I reference you a lot as well, is because um, people were under the impression that I'd come up with that model. And I said, and I was like, no, it's Stanhope of doing anything but a comedy club. We hid. I under-publicized. I did secret shows. I spent no money on marketing. And the crowd sold. If people wanted me in a particular town, they would message me directly on Facebook and I'd say, prove you can sell me 50 tickets. In under 24 hours. Oh, that's interesting. And everyone keeps their money down. <laughs> well, I think we're going to steal that from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was a blast because you turn up. It's, yeah, it's not stealing if it's a good idea. No, yeah. that's what, that, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but look, I, it was definitely like you used to play bowling alleys, you used to do anything but a comedy club, indie music venues. And so that's Doug's the guy that I got that model from, or Brian. Was it you or Brian? I, 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 I in case he's listening, which he's not, but. Uh, David Cross and a couple other people started doing that before I did. He's definitely not listening. But they, yeah, Even but, he was here. but they were doing it. <laughs> they were doing it in friendly camps, like yeah. Athens, Georgia. Yeah. That one major bar, hipster venue. The, 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 the laughing skull? No, uh, Athens. Oh, yeah. it's uh, Athens. like the fucking is it a number of four twenty club or I don't know. It's a, David Cross filmed a special there. They, yeah. Oh, they in Memphis. It was in Memphis, and I know. I remember. I know. No, no, no. Uh, this is Athens, but uh, Athens is a hippie kind of town. Like they, they would, like we're doing this in fucking Fayetteville, Arkansas, or Lafayette, Louisiana. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what when you when did that too? I'm say, I'm saying when we started four walling places and working for door deals and mm. rock and roll clubs, mm. we're not doing it in towns that already know us. Oh, really? And are you're friendly. Going in, you're going in cold. You were going in cold, so you weren't even playing to fans. Well, yeah, no, we're playing to fans, but you know, not necessarily. Did Fargo, it? yeah, we had a couple fans at the aquarium, and then other people. Anyway. But we, often you'll have, like, them vouch for you and then bring, like, friends of friends and stuff. Nope. And it becomes like a bit it, of a party it, atmosphere. It, it, part of it was the fact that everything was kind of colliding where you could get the MySpace or the Facebook and then ticketing came online because brown paper tickets. That was the first thing we did. And the only reason we even picked them was because it was a company that charged 99 cents. Oh, that's... that's it. And that was part of it. it was like, And it was only because I lived in Seattle at the time. And I go... What about them? Yeah. And it was one of those things where everything kind of like, and then there I, was a I, problem I with the comedy club in, in, with Sean Rouse. If there was a, a first place that I remember was, uh, Harvey's Comedy Club, one of the worst places ever. Portland. Where the guy would just, he wouldn't watch your act, but he'd come in the next day and just read comment cards. And mm-hmm. hey, you get some bad comment cards. Papered the room with the calling center. And it was like seven oh. shows. You ever yeah. see Andy Kindler's bit on that? Uh, uh, he did it at the Montreal where he goes I can't play it like they go they go through the phone where do they get these people he didn't say that but he was like going through the phone book going hi you you've won the answering the phone competition <laughs> listen do you have 20 or 30 friends uh, who've never been to comedy and have no idea how to behave in public <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what this place was. He would brag to you that he doesn't have to advertise because he has the biggest telemarketing staff. And you'd get those I ain't never won nothing in my life people that would come. And so I would have like good. Don't believe it. We held a rap form in contempt and then I lost all my money. <laughs> that happened with Jonglers. They went down again. Like that's why the post boom period got overexposed with uh, Michael McIntyre's Roadshow. And that transient kind of reality TV audience that now goes to X Factor or needs to see themselves was in comedy for a little bit, you know? And then uh, the clubs pandered to that. And then the real rock and roll comedy fans fucked off because every comic seemed the same. And that audience was always going to leave. So in the post-boom period and a bit of a fucking come to Jesus moment, I borrowed your business model. And it's still like, I'm going to uh, finish it's this. It's not up. even a borrowed go. Uh, just go. Of, of Doug is. I think uh, it's, it's also unconsciously as well. I think uh, the, the the a great example of a hybrid of someone that writes to premise, so it's not bitty bits. Knows how to structure an out. Like you could put him anywhere. Like okay, maybe a music festival, whatever. People might need a ramp, but 
If you put it, you in one of the international comedy festivals, you know, comedy fans are going to know who you are. And let's face it, when you first came to the Edinburgh Festival, your gig was packed with comedians. Uh, and, uh, like the generation, I suppose, two or three generations before me, I know that generation, like they all went to see you and you were beloved immediately. And, uh, cause sometimes people have too much polish. And again, we, we lack polish because we end but up working. That, in that was people. also where everyone was, I was intimidated because everyone had a themed set. So it's got a, the entire set. They had a, uh, cause it's to this day, when I play the UK journalists, well, what is your show about? I go, it's fucking bits. So I wasn't There's doing. There's a backlash to that now, actually, is that the yeah. Nino's like plug and Ari's thing was great that he, I think instinctively, because when I talked to him about it, he didn't know he'd done it. He knew the difference between theme and writing to premise. And writing to premise is you have the idea for the show and you write about that for an hour. A theme is oh, 2012 was a very difficult year for me. <laughs> Fuck off. Yes. But we all do that show. But because a lot of the co-critics and journalists who now actually don't have the power they used to, which is why the backlash is coming, uh, the, uh, they, they, they're theatre critics. So they come over from theater into comedy and that's why America, visiting American acts would actually get a bit of leeway because they can just write about what you and what you are and your voice. But if we're going there 10 years in a row, making them, they don't want to work. They're people that want to go to shows for free. They're not journalists, right? So it's like, oh, motherfucker, I've got to try and explain what Burns is again. So they then, if you don't have a structure and also if you don't point out the structure, the touchstones, because they sometimes won't even give you credit as the author of even understanding your own fucking work, uh, particularly as Aussies, foreigners, we get it a lot because there's a lot of snooty kind of English dudes. So Canadians, Australians, and uh, Irish, like you said, we're kind of the better comics there because we came from somewhere that had no comedy and then all of a sudden there's somewhere where you can work seven nights a week and these fucking cunts are dining out on their 20 minutes for 10 years. And we're like, fucking eat our dust. <laughs> I came from the most remote city on the fucking planet. Comedians are like Cabbage Patch kids. They don't exist. <laughs> and you motherfuckers are going to bitch that you're fucking, oh, it's not as good as it used to be. Fucking 20 minutes you had. Uh, and so I used to even get shit for recording stuff and having albums. And I was like. Oh, and- that was a big thing. Like selling merch oh, was frowned upon. Yeah. In Edinburgh? In the UK. Just, just at clubs. It's how I made oh, my right. living. I was banned from so many clubs. My first five years there, I think, like I made my living headlining universities because I got lucky because one of my albums got passed around like a jerky's boy thing. That was the other thing I was going to say. Any fucking US comic that isn't minted, you get royalties here and airplay. There's radio and Sirius and satellite that plays, doesn't censor you. And you get royalty checks. It's, uh, that's a, another topic is the, the censorship over there is, uh, I guess it's, no, uh, well, there's a watershed. No. Well, you can say, f- We're well, I get UK or Australia. UK. Okay. I, I guess it's, I don't Australia know anymore. Well. Melbourne, same thing. Melbourne's even more so because the guilty of the environment, the more politically correct they are. <laughs> like the Swiss don't want to hear fucking anything because they're sitting on like Nazi gold. <laughs> So, like, Melbourne, like, looks down its nose upon the rest of Australia and is like, oh, the rest of Australia is so racist. There's no Aboriginal problem here. It's like, you killed them all. <laughs> it's one of the few times I remember successfully committed. It's so phony. Playing Melbourne saying, yeah, I guess you guys are all racist and getting a cheer in Wild Melbourne. Break. In Melbourne. <laughs> But my my fan base, and that's why I have to... No, no, Melbourne is going, oh, yes, that's right, Australia is. They oh. are excluding themselves from that. Not with my fan base. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't go out and make friends. But I would say, uh, when I was doing Charlie he Brooker... He's at a bird's table, so he doesn't interact. That's funny. Unless it's a subway He does. Segment. He's so beloved. <laughs> what, when I was doing Charlie Brooker thing, like, what you could not say, like... It was more politically correct uh, in the UK versus where here it's words. You oh, can't say also, fuck or cunt. The political correctness here is xenophobic. It's racist. Even the fucking... The, 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 I'm in LA right now and I've never seen... This was the thing I was saying at the show last night of just people were like, you kind of put that into words. Was, <laughs> uh, was um, I've never seen so much moral posturing coupled with complete lack of altruism. It's so fucking... 
It's like an awards ceremony, someone going, oh, Haiti, we stand with you. And Haiti's going, fix your backyard, cunt. <laughs> right? Like, I, I was riding around on a bicycle uh, uh, the first couple of weeks I was there. I've, I've ne- And it's been 10 years since I've been there. So it's like the boiling the frog situation. Shit's getting turned up. The heat's getting turned up slowly but surely. The frog doesn't notice it dies. Yeah. And the homelessness there now and the disparity of wealth is not first world. I've only seen shit like that in India, South Africa. Like fucking no healthcare. Everyone's armed to the armed to the teeth. They live in fucking gated communities. Homeless people now. There's an outbreak of fucking typhoid. Fucking typhoid. Like so, a, a yoldy virus. So I don't care how much fucking money you make. If you don't take care of your less fortunate people, an airborne virus isn't going to go. Oh, I better ring the buzzer. Fucking. <laughs> It's just the, the motorways ain't finished, yeah. and now with the royalty checks, I'm paying my taxes in this country, and I'm fucking furious going, where's my money going, cunt? This motorway isn't finished. It goes to nowhere. You're South Africa with snacks. How fucking <laughs> dare you? And it picks a colour like no ever, I've ever fucking... It picks a colour in a way that claims is not being racist. Their rules of political correctness are so fucking racist and colour... Color, divisory that and xenophobic you ask someone their heritage and they go oh that's racist i'm american and you're like no that's xenophobic how the fuck has this bubble managed to brainwash you into thinking that other countries are a fucking insult <laughs> they sold you this bill of goods and you you just go oh that's fucking racist to acknowledge that asia exists like <laughs> what are you on about and it, I, I don't know how it's and when I put some punch ones in this is going to work. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but right now I'm just fucking livid. Uh but back to Doug is uh so like you said with the 22 minute bit the you still you write the way a festival guy would but on the road but you also have the beats of, you know. F- so yeah, I, 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 I confused. When you said festival, my mind went immediately to music festival, mixed bill shit. Yeah, I mean like, comedy festival. Yeah, Edinburgh. Sure. Yeah, I, I, could, I could probably do Edinburgh, but why? It's they so abusive of the artists. They fuck you, and everyone still. We had a, a thing. Cool, One, I, I, I don't know if it's oh four or oh six. No, it's one of the off years where. It came out that the at that time the average comedian playing the Edinburgh Fringe Festival lost uh, the equivalent of fifteen thousand U.S. dollars in yeah, change. Yeah, ten k. It was like also some agencies would go, "Hey, if you sell it out, you might break even." Like what? But then the free fringe, for a month, free fringe is massive now. For for the listener, that's a, a month. month. Yeah. Where you're like just stacked in bunks. Yes. Because there's 3,000 shows on 24 hours a day. I think like the first show usually goes up at 11 a.m. and the last show finishes at four or five. So as a PR stunt, I'll say we put, uh, cause that came out. They had the exact figure of what the average comedian loses doing that again, 13 years ago. But so we put, spent 300 bucks to, Put in the program that I will do one show for one person for that amount of money. <laughs> and then <sighs> get an email Hey, is Doug available on this date to do a private party? Which no one ever wants me to do a corporate gig. But, but it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was a sports book place. They, that, uh, 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 online sports betting, sports, sports bet review. Fucking how do you do? Doesn't matter. And what? Hennigan, yeah. the filthy Scotsman, yeah. always, he doesn't say, I'm not available. He says, oh, well, it would cost you $25,000. And they didn't blink. So now we have this conundrum where what if one guy does <laughs> buy that ticket where we're going to lose money? Because <laughs> <laughs> the average audience number used to be three. Oh, my God. Mm. It still is, I think, actually, but except for the free fringe now. It's fucking you have to line up because also you tell people that they can't have something because everything sells out and you have to line up early to get in because it's free to get in. And um, mm. 
Yeah, don't. I'll I'll, I'll talk for a minute uh, while you chew because you don't chew into a microphone. No. God damn you! You got to eat a plum. Well, you. Uh, it's good because Gump. I said, hey, that fruit was there when I left on my last tour. I go eat fruit. And if you don't eat the fruit, chop it up and put it in the freezer so I can use it for smoothies. Well, it's still here. That was a month old? No, no, no. This is a week old. I was gonna say Not even. I put it in the fridge it's the day great, after you left. It's so, in great I mean, fucking nick. Yeah, uh, it's fine. And so Doug also, um, like Doug and I actually became aware of one another through a mutual friend, Dave Fulton, because we had the same material word for word. That's why I trip a bit whenever I see you as well. We did? Parallel thinking. We had both had a word-for-word word bit about fucking a melon on ecstasy. Oh, is, at least it's not a rubber fuck my face. What's a rubber <laughs> fuck my face? It's a Jim Jeffries thing. <laughs> oh, no, wasn't, that the, wasn't that the egg? The egg came yeah. from my was rubber yeah. fuck my face, egg yeah. in my ass, and that first, one of those first. Yeah, but, no, he stuck an egg in his ass. That happened. So he says. No, it did happen. It fucking asked all his flatmates. Mate, uh, okay. people fuck. You've met comics in the UK. Jim Jeffries, Jim Jeffries has admitted that he stole a lot of that bit from me. He had a similar right. story and then added all my bits into it, but he continued to do it. Into an HBO special when he crossed over and you know, they go to YouTube. People are calling him out. And, uh, yeah, I, it's, I was far done doing that bit by the time he's, and if you, if you're fine with, and, but he's actually, yeah, he said, yeah, I, 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 I kiped a lot of your bit. I, he also, I think he said ages ago that he had to stop watching anyone edgy because he's worried that it will, Absorb. I, other people do that. Absorb things and remember it and think they thought of it. Yeah, but he did not do that. But you and I had no idea each other existed. And I think... I so what was uh, the fucking a melon? I never... That was like... I, I know that bit. Yeah. Uh, and I probably fucked a melon, but it was not that night. Uh, I get really particular now about, like, I just, like, even a tiny lie in my bit, I will stop and go, I never actually said that. I thought about it after the fact, even with my putting my dog down. Yeah, but I your just, way around it is you can go, so I'm going, which means you can say I'm thinking. And I'm going, rather than going, so I said. I also don't like fucking... Being the hero of the story, like if, invariably, if you are saying something quippy in it, or you're thinking, or you wish that you said something, like I think you always, I have a rule of thumb of if I'm going to pull the rug out from under people, I should be standing on it myself, just so that I go over to it. I have a story. Yeah, go on. Uh, where I actually did what. Because I was drunk, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this podcast and we're gonna put out a, a number two podcast because you're carrying this fucking thing, and then we're gonna do this as a part two on Wednesday. Great, yes, and I'll do a part two as well. My producer's been nagging me for, to come and see you for ages, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna need some mental state because I may have a fucking mushroom flashback, and I did <laughs> just before I went on, but we'll go into that. I uh. What's up? I'm, I'm thinking about mushroom flashbacks where, because that was always the thing. You're, what, what are you, 46 now or 48. something? 48. Yeah. Within two years, boom. That's carnival rules. Yeah, you don't get a prize. <laughs> it's a guess your weight, guess your. Uh, guess your age within two years? That's not impressive. You fucking. What's my age? Uh, oh, your age. Hang on. Let's have a look. Uh, I think it's a road hard run. So, <laughs> uh, I wish I could have kept a straight face during that, but it was. Uh, I'm going to say 43. Oh, wow. That's oh. so close. That's so close. Are you lying? 10 years off. Uh, yeah. you look so, great. you do not you also great. get a prize. Okay. He gets, he gets the prize. You don't get the prize. Thank but you. It's a bit hard. Thank you. I'm really. Uh, the wanky punk. You got the wacky punk thing happening in the. Do that. Yeah, okay. Smoke and mirrors, my friend. Let's break this off. We'll go into part two, which we'll get into the argument with Yamanika, me having a mushroom flesh. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to keep doing you. I want to, let's go to Yamanika. I'm going to do just my fucking last 
uh, two weeks on the road that has nothing to do with you. So I'm gonna we're gonna put out two different podcasts. The swap cast with us will go out on Wednesday, and then I'm gonna put out another one because we have another one the next week that we already recorded that has to go out the next week. Oh, got so you. let's and keep. I wasn't present for any of that. Yeah. No, so I'm saying that. this is there's no reason to do these notes during your podcast. Yes, our podcast. I didn't. Or to talk yeah. about this on the podcast. Our swap cast. All right. All right, I think everyone's off topic right now, and I think it's because we all need to piss. Yeah. So, hey, once again, cocktails. And Doug's best friend, Charlie, herded the kittens yet again. Best friend. One job. Didn't get a look in on the best friend thing. That's disgusting. Shame on you. <laughs> Hey, Doug, I've noticed the, this uh, tin shack and bar you've got. What are we going to do if we have, like, a fire? But or is there any way for us to remortgage? I wouldn't even know how. Oh, well then, Doug, we can make a call one. Buttfuck, fistfuck, pissface, incorporated. They do remortgaging, too? Not only do they do scat and pissing on you in a trough, like a fucking scumbag. <laughs> Well, how long will it take? Just ring up Vinny out the back of a van. He will nudge, wink, and go, sure, you're covered. And then we will be able to piss, scat, and fist fuck each other Don't. for the rest of the night because Th it's so expedient? That's right. Piss, scat, and fuck stick remortgages. They'll come around and <laughs> cover, Dot gov. cover your house in shit. And fuck it. They'll dig inside your own asshole and start writing your name on the wall so you can blame being crazy. I never knew shit scat and piss fucking would be so available if we just had more time. I love you, Bernsey. Hey, now with all this extra time, why don't we get a scout and fuck him in the testicles? <laughs> Not available in New York, Florida, or Connecticut. Your results may vary. Trough not included. <laughs> Must be 18. Voidware prohibited. Hi, this is Richard Simmons, and you're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Hey, I want to dance with somebody. Do you hear that water boy bloke died of AIDS? <laughs> hey, on, back up, let me back up. At uh, the Sydney Mardi Gras, <laughs> uh, there was a bloke, I can't remember, Phil Nickel used to do a bit about it, but there's a guy called the Waterman or something, and at the Mardi Gras, he traveled around the world going to Mardi Gras, just lying in a trough with a fucking mask and snorkel on. Oh. And his thing was, he was the piss trough guy, and everyone would just come in and piss. That's a together. thing? <laughs> Apparently. Well, not anymore. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he died of AIDS. People were like, I mean, no, no shit. Kidding. No shit. <laughs> really? Because he reeked of hygiene. <laughs> Someone else. His tip bucket never filled up. <laughs> what the fuck did they call him? Not water boy. Fucking snorkeler. Free diver. Uh, let's let's, let's go back to the yellow fever. What we're what we're closing with because oh, I plugs. What? Let's do no, plugs. no, no. We're closing on plugs. But Yamanika, uh, a story I uh, I only have a vague memory of. Do you, I'm going to tell. You fill him in. No, no, I've, no. I've he's the one that, that one. he yeah. brought it up. She's a mate of mine. And let, I did race wars recently. Let me let me. Uh, Race Wars Tell is you. Kurt Metzger and... No, he's not there anymore. It's Sherrod Small. Sherrod podcast. Small. I love Sherrod. Yeah. Oh, mate. It's a, and he loves it being a shit Let fight. me tell you my snapshot no. drunken memories of what I remember. This was on the bonfire. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the, that's what it was, we're talking about. It was during, I, I assume, a book tour of I'm doing a million things... And that was a late one. Was it the one where you it was were a, was Artie and Howard Stern? No. Whole? It was, uh, it was not Stern. With Big J O. Hang on. Look. And Dan Soda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that was- Big fan, big fan. I, I had done a million radio shows, podcasts, drinking the whole time because I do not perform in any function sober. I don't have social interactions sober. It's not- So now- it's not like a show or even a two show night where you can pace your drinking. I'm doing all morning day and that was And it's New York. You don't like New York. Oh, right? I fucking hate oh, it. Oh, it's such a fucking proof positive we've barely evolved beyond rats. 
but amazing comedy. The only amazing comedy. Only time I've enjoyed New York is when I book it right after London, because London's even worse. You think London's worse? Oh yeah, I did that whole bit. At least New York makes sense. Seventy third Street. You know what's next? Seventy fourth Street. Yeah, the streets don't even make but sense. That's because they knew how bad they were going to fuck up. They couldn't see the sky. That place, my fucking inner compass goes out because it's like no wonder you have to number this shit. And if you know anything about this planet, that place is a sitting fucking duck. It is Atlantis in waiting. Two tsunamis. That place is fucking done. It ain't ready. Oh, it's no. the Maldives with fucking um, oh. 300 million people. It's like three I remember million. saying it there and the crowd kind of panicked. I stopped getting laughs when it was just a, well, <laughs> which is normal for me in the States thus far. And uh, that I was like, look on Google Maps. Those aren't inlets. Those are fucking fingers. Like the North Atlantic gives a fuck about you. Like, of the, it's very parochial as well. Like, it's not aware that it's a, a, it's a, it's the byproduct of the world. It thinks it is the world. It thinks it made the world as opposed to the world making. Uh, it's, it's disgusting. And I agree. But yes, back to by this time, I'm on the Bonfire podcast and she's one of the people. And from what I remember, I said s- something to the effect of, uh, you think that, no, no one regrets fucking you. Let's like, back up. Well, no, th- I'm telling you what I remember, and you who have recently heard this sober can. And then she went batshit in my memory about no, no one's ever regretted fucking me, and fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you. And then I go, yeah, I'm too drunk to be here. I'm not going to engage this fucking person in uh trying to do that Joe Rogan versus Carlo Mencia gateway to fame by starting a f- Okay, not what happened. All right. And I have the utmost faith in you. That That's what I remember. I have the utmost faith in you. That's that what I remember. If you this, you will go, ooh, that was I racist. wouldn't. I promise you, you will go, ooh, that was a bit I, racist. I, I, before you start, I want to set... Did was Doug seated in the bonfire and Yamanika came in, That's or right. was it the opposite? Yamanika came in. So Doug was already there talking to to Big J and Big Dan J Soda. And Dan Soda, and okay. they even said afterwards as well, like uh, the idea that Yamanika doesn't have an, a sense of humor about race is just not true. Okay, because right? they proved it immediately. The moment you left, they made a race joke, and it was fun. It was I don't fun. remember anything, dude. Here's what happened. Okay, you were hammered. Yeah, so, but but, but I'm listening right. to you. Doug was the guest. And Yamanika came in because oh, she was, was also a guest. Okay. She's a guest. She's a regular. All right. So, yeah, it's a round table. But you kind were of there, thing. and you were from what I remember, and you were in your suit, and you were you were being you. Yeah. And who were they invited I, on the oh, show? By the way, I'm well aware that why your guard is up because right now we are like any moment of racism, and and by that I mean weakness, human weakness is fucking jumped upon now. So like it's weird. Like Liam Neeson, it was a weird time to do it, but I I haven't oh, yeah. met a black person that was mad at him. He put his hand up. And he was like, fuck it, I'll go first. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a byproduct of a racist society, right? And then everyone was like, fuck that, get him, shut up! Yeah. Right, you know? And uh, I did, I just, I, I want to set it up so that Doug didn't crash anything. He was no, sitting in the chair. Uh, we were both drunk. guests. Yeah, exactly. He was drunk, barely exactly. conscious. And it, was, it was neutral territory. And here's my understanding of this as well, is sometimes when we get older, as edgier comics, for lack of a better term, sometimes... I do the same thing. I, do, I take the same liberty myself. And this is what I even said to Yamanika when uh, I was on Race Wars with her. I said, uh, he was, he did that thing that I, that we do sometimes as older, wider, edgier comics. And the fact of the matter is we are elder statesmen now. Just have to accept it. Is sometimes we go, I'm the guy that says anything. So I'm so not racist. I will get away with being ironically racist. And the first thing you said when she walked in was you went, ah, the blacks are here. <sighs> no, that's the first words <laughs> out of your mouth. And then, so, and then there was like three things in a row. So forget the argument you were making. There was three in a row that it was, you are less than me. It was not an argument. It was what I remember. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'm absolutely. counting on you. As- so this was the, that was the straw that broke the camel's back because then you did that trick that sometimes, uh, we do when we fucking build a, a, a world. We build a fucking fan base or whatever and everything, you build everything yourself. Sometimes, you know, I always believe self-awareness doesn't come from within, you know, and uh, you did that thing of laying a trap, but basically the quiz, and this is why she fucking snapped, and I spoke to her about it, and she goes, that's exactly why I snapped, was you laid a trap of the quiz being, know what I'm thinking or you're an idiot. 
And it wasn't what you said or how it was done. It was just that there was the emotion and there was like three in a row. We said, are you a trans person? Just I've been fooled before. And the thing is, there was no banter between you at that stage. So then when you went, well, has anyone regretted fucking you? And she was like, by that stage, she was like, fuck you and your questions, right? Mm -hmm. So she's like, I, no one's ever. And you went, well, then you're not self-aware. And, mate, I have the utmost faith in you that if I say it was hilarious that you would accuse someone of not being self-aware in that moment, <laughs> because that's a bit like me going, hey, Doug, well, what color am I thinking of? Oh, uh, gray. Purple, you're a fucking idiot, right? <laughs> and that was basically <laughs> what that interaction was. And she, and the funny thing is, when I go to New York, I have an easier time being understood by black folks than I do white folks because it picks a color. New York picks a color. So often I will wind up talking at cross purposes with other white guys because they presume, yeah, but we pick a color and we keep a, so there's a shorthand between us when really technically I'm foreign. And you may have noticed I'm an emotional, nervous fucking wreck. And I have a theory that black folks actually can read people very well. Everyone gets a positive intellectual stereotype. And if I would hazard a guess, I would say, Black folks are very emotive in their language and they don't use sneaky patterns. And, uh, which is why I think sometimes, but, you know, people say to one another, do you feel me? Right. And so it wasn't about that. It was the emotion in the leading up to that point. And then when you set the trap and then when you're an idiot for not knowing what I'm thinking, that's when she went fucking haywire. Yeah. I, I, but the first words out of your mouth when she walked in was blacks are here. And even I think bingo was like, oh, 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 that's fucking. <laughs> but we now live in a time where I know this is going to sound weird. We demonize racism too much, so no one wants to admit to it. And everyone wants to finger point. But, like, I, I, I am not judging whatsoever because I am perfectly capable of doing everything you did. I, I, I've always talked about this, that there's no racism, sexism, etc., or was none in a green room. And all the shit you can't say on stage, you can still say in a green room. When we're backstage... And talking shit, everyone's talking. Fuck you, faggot. Yeah. <laughs> just, just every, like, any kind of, the, all the awful things you can't say on stage, we say to each other. So, not knowing her as a comedian, I probably thought, oh, everything is on the table. So, yeah, let's just talk some but weird then shit. The radio and then there's well, he's, in a, room, like, he's then in a room. He's in a room with Big J, Jan Soder, and Yamanika, and him. Yeah. It's basically a green room with microphones. That's true. That's but, she, but it's on the radio, so she gets no, shit absolutely. for her reaction. Absolutely. She's held responsible. Yeah, yeah. Way more responsible than anyone else in that room for her reaction. Well, it turned into it, he, he ended up leaving the room. Yes. It was too much. Uh, yeah, I go, I, uh, I'll just that say the wrong read. thing. <laughs> you know what? I think. But I don't remember I, saying that. Uh, black city. And I was like, no. Dude, what the fuck? I, I told you I, every memory I have head, of that. It was a complete no, headbuttable offense. It was a headbuttable offense. I heard, I heard the entire thing. I, your, your, your facts are right on. You're, you're right there. And, and you don't need me to tell you that. You know what you saw. But it is the Doug's charm. Gets him by a lot. That's my point. He's and able. To, he's able. To and I was not lot. charming, evidently. Yeah. Well, and and yeah. you you picked a like moment the, for an exit because you knew it wasn't working, and you're out because I there can't had read to be the room. A, I had, should go. Yeah, but the motivation wasn't to pick on her; it was he, to make her laugh. Exactly. It's like I have exactly. had several it jokes in the past with, with an end bomb in them about the end bomb. So I, we all agree that Dan Soder and Big J tricked Doug. In, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Look, hey, someone's pussies. fucking. Look at you. Look, gotta, why are you. Shut the fuck up. This is a catch cat. Why are you so No mad? blacks is in my rider. This why is, are you so <laughs> mad with the bonfire? The uh, bon. What, what, what are, are you so. Bonfire? Why are you so mad at them? Uh, What's Dan, the problem? Uh, when you left, it was hilarious as well. They were going, I mean, it's weird because there's this fucking legend. And that's the other thing as well. Is, did you forget? You're the man. You're the yeah. fucking man. See, I'm that would have been. Man. That would have been good to hear the off mic. Like when they went to commercial or whatever they do on Sirius. XM, if it would have been great to hear what those guys were talking about after he left the room. Oh, they, no, they, they kept going because Dan goes. No, I know they kept going. But, comic there, but when all of a sudden, I didn't know. Off. Let him, let him, let him finish because I didn't hear this. Yeah, he goes like, uh, I didn't know what to do with that because there's this legendary comic in yeah, here, yeah. and then he's doing weird shit. And the thing is, they proved everything you said wrong immediately because they made black jokes and they were because they had a rapport, and it was funny. Oh, but it was point. just. 
But at the same time, like they said, made it a green room. When we are the say whatever's in your fucking head. So you're right? saying I'm not welcome there because I was the only guy that's not allowed to. I, I'm Rudolph the fucking red nosed reindeer. <laughs> I think it was her and her mate. Said, but it was it, there was a there was a there was a dismissive tone to it that it was that was you are less than me. I don't know who you are as a comic. And then uh, and if you double down with that, with the first words out of your mouth is the, the blacks are here. And then you don't even find out her name. Of course it's going to kick off. And she's funny, by the way. And she's a good egg. She's a good egg. I like her a lot. Well, I will reach out to her on Twitter. Please do. And say Brendan Burns. Said I should call you. Burnsy. <laughs> Said I should yell racial slurs at you. Because <laughs> also then your people fucking pile on her and everything. And then like the, the cunty are part of your fucking... Fan base. That's not because oh, on Twitter. No, I know. Sorry, on yeah, Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, not your. All oh, oh, right. You, people means two things, yeah. here, doesn't it? Not Wait, your, you people. No, no, no. I, I thought you meant people in the room. No, I mean like no, your people on Twitter. Trolls, yeah. Your fucking the the, the lesser desirable <laughs> element of your fan uh, base. I'm glad you told bites. me that because I still just remembered her just defending the fact that no one was ever regretful of. Fucking her. I didn't know. I you know I think, what number it? am I thinking of? 13. Yeah. Seven, you're a cunt. No, he got it right. Uh, In my head, he got it right. Yeah, see, I bet, I bet. Look at you. You're so worried about your cash cow so getting Neeson d- done. You know, I, I, <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> my cash cow. I really, I really don't think that way because I, when I heard it, I'm like, you know what? The problem here is there's a, there's a disconnect because Doug is sitting there, obviously drunk, looking like a, a huckster with his, you but know, punks. carnival. And I, I totally get what you're saying. And you, and like I said, you were totally right. And on top what, of that, though, as well, we are living in a time where you can't go. That was racist. Sorry. Yeah. I, you can't own it because you fucking get leathered. Yeah. But please continue your thought. Well, it, it, it's like you can't have everyone understand the background of the person that's speaking. Yes. You know, and I don't, when he came in hot like that, she shut down. That was it. And that's, that's fine because that's, she's like, Oh, I don't dig this. And then whatever. But he, there's no malice. Yeah. He's not saying it. But she it definitely really, doesn't know who you are. Exactly. She doesn't. Exactly. It's a, it's definitely a predominantly white fan base. This is what drives me fucking nuts. I remember Jeannie Asher years ago. There was a, I was backstage. There was a comic. It was a white British comic and she has a bit about being black famous, right? And he goes, I don't know that she does this bit. So what do you mean? He talks about being famous. And I went, walk down the streets of Birmingham with her. Like, it's, she gets mobbed. And he's like, and this is a supposedly a PC middle class white English dude. And he's like, yeah, but that's just the black community. And I was like, do you think black people know who the fuck Harry Hill is? Like, you know, half the people that you rate, you think the black community know who the fuck they are? Like, there's, you know, people have you know, their, their fan bases. And sometimes, yeah, but it was, uh, but also anytime I, I, when I went on the show and talked about it, I even said I have the utmost wait, faith. Wait, which show? In Doug. Uh, okay. on Race Wars, I think. Race Wars. It was, I said I have the utmost faith in Doug that when I point out to him that that's what happened, he'll go, oh, that's fucked. <laughs> oh, oh, so this is a, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, this I'm going to appearance? trust, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to go back and listen to it. <laughs> oh, really? Fuck no! I'll just r- reach out and say Brendan Burns said I was wrong. So sorry. Oh, bless you! Oh, that makes me very happy. I'll do it right now. That does make me so. You already happy. did. Uh, She's a good egg. Uh, I'll, I'll get on Twitter right now. I mean, it, it could fucking not go well. <laughs> I don't care. I know it might be like fuck you, you fucking. She's a she's a she's a firebrand of a lady. Last, it, it was funny that that episode. Even she and I were like, it, it was a thing where I thought they were going to have to go to break just because she was. Inconsolable. Yes. You know what I mean? She went to walk yep. out four times in the show <laughs> I was in. But I th- it was like the fake walk, it was the fake comedy walkout. But yeah. sometimes as well, I've noticed like, um. Oh, I don't do fake. No, that wasn't no. a fake. He didn't. He <laughs> no, no, because, no, 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 he knew it was I'm time saying, to I'm saying, I, I, I walked. Your exit was perfect because there was no. And I still had to do Artie Lang that yeah. night, I think. <laughs> and I, that's another one. I, uh, I can't talk Dude, about this. I have in- a project, but I am going to have to revisit all of this. You walked into Stern with a bottle of whiskey. That was, uh, that was not that same tour. This was two days. It, uh, I'm going to have to go. The is, bonfire. Is drinking still fun for you? No, it's necessary. Right. It's a necessity. So you don't have the shakes and shit. Fair enough. 
You know what I like the the one time I remember drinking was really fun was when we did thirty days in the hole and we discovered new cocktails. Yeah, and then and then and then we had a we had a library the whiskey of cocktails. sour yeah. with egg whites oh. that Tracy is making. That's I think the only and that's how I know I can't is whiskey is the thing that if I look at like a tray of really old whiskey I'm like oh which means wait you're going straight to whiskey neat. Like, you ain't fucking around. Oh. You know what I mean? If it was, ah, I can handle a beer, that's the sneaky cunt that might get me. But if it's like, I look at a bottle and go, mm. oh, fucking neck that cunt, then we get oblivious. That's easy to keep at bay. As they say, what is it? It's never the pink elephants that get you, it's the white rabbits. Because it's <laughs> they're small, they're normal, they're everyday, you don't notice them. The pink yeah. elephants- Even the UK has better AA slogan. Yeah. I don't think it's an AA slogan. No. Well, Maybe I it is. Don't. I don't know. I don't, they don't have AA well, over there. They just have oh, bottoming people out. People don't even do anonymous here. Uh, that's me. all. Yeah, that's, uh, oh, let's do your plugs. I did a meeting and the fucking, they asked what I did for a living to check oh, out. Oh, that's the same as an airplane. I didn't go to meetings for years, actually. I was miserable. And then started, Johnny just started going back. Anytime you say you're a comedian in any social situation, well, then you have to answer a lot of questions, whether it's AA or a middle seat. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't say it. <laughs> but also, like, I'm going there specifically to not be a comedian. You know what yeah, I mean? I'm being honest. Like, it took a month of fucking being locked up in rehab to stop performing. Like, apparently my mate Tat, who I think you've met, uh, I don't remember this, but I was so fucking broken and I'd done like three tabs of ecstasy and knocked a bottle of red back before I even went in because I was worried I wouldn't be fucked up enough and they wouldn't take me. <laughs> and you're supposed to tell your life story first day in and apparently I just stood up and did 20 minutes of my act. <laughs> and he laughs? No! Because uh, the people are just going, this is tragic. Who the fuck's this kind That's of why you burn the light? I, uh, I, there's a chapter in uh, my first book where I talk about... I as a kid had to go to AA meetings with my mother and they would have like headliner speakers. Oh, Indian John is going to speak tonight and he's great and he's funny and he's like, and it's a shit ton of euphoric recall. It's basically like, ah, oh, and then I fucking fucked six birds, and then next thing I know, but anyway, it was dreadful. Like, shut yeah. the fuck up! Yeah, and at the end, but I'm glad I'm in a place now where I don't have to do that anymore. Sorry for making you laugh and fucking congratulate alcoholism. <laughs> oh, SoundCloud isn't where you go for my podcast. Hold on, we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah let's do it, let's do it. Right, I, I'm, I'm going to do another podcast after this. I want to do the Mushroom flashback before we go. Yeah. Do it. Oh, so plugs now. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. We'll plug at the end. Wait, go uh, ahead. Well, start before now. we start, before we before we get into that, we'll just we'll go right into it. What? Where do they? Where, where do you prefer them to go to get dumb so, white guy? Acast, YouTube dot com slash Brendan Burns Comedy right. or Patreon dot com, and they can get it early. And sometimes it's entire oh, sets better. up there. That's what we'll I put out a lot, of, a lot of sets of me bombing. I only pretty much put up sets of me bombing. Patreon dot com slash Brendan Burns. Yeah, it's B R E N D O N. But you I are in school. Now I gotta make sure Brendan it's Brendan. Brendan. No one spells it right automatically. That's the way. Spe- oh no, you know Brendan Walsh. Yeah. When I first met him, he goes, "You're the one." I mean, what do you mean? He goes, "You're keeping me off right. Google, you cunt." And now <laughs> Brendan Urie has fucked us both. Well, no one knows who I am in the states. And that Brendan Urie cunt came out and fucking panic in the disco bloke. Came out as pansexual. Mm-hmm. Bummed me off fucking US Google forever. <laughs> you type in Brendan Burns. Or oh, Brendon. It used to, I used to be the number two or number one Brendan on the planet. Like, you didn't even need to type in my surname. And that fucking panic at the disco cunt bumped me. You can see where this is how little. No idea. This is how little um, what my dad and brother knew I did for That's a why I keep calling you Burnsy. Because that's how we always knew you. Burnsy. Burnsy! Which I, I think actually I addressed in my book. And you're in my book as well, Fear of Hell. Just send Vegas. me your fucking book. I just realized I got the last first print copy in my car. I'm going to give it to you. Yay! It's 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 covered in shit, but it's the last one of the first edition. So Fantastic! I think I've even got source of me as well. All right, so go with the mushroom flashback. Let's go. Sw- are we doing, not doing plugs? We we'll yeah. do those at the end. That's kind of well. I, we could do them now. Do them now. Do plugs now, so that yeah, in case people get bored with this. Yeah, and also, uh, Doug, where are you going to be? Where can people catch you? Nowhere. Oh. I got a I got a summer project. Have you? So fancy. 
Can you discuss it? No, you can't. That's no, no, uh, I want to, but well, that's the price. That's that's the sign of a bloke with something actually going on. <laughs> I'm just like, can you discuss? But it? we will get on the mailing list at DougStandup.com because in September we've just mapped out a tour that should be going through. Uh, says so the upper Midwest. I think we're going to start in Wisconsin, Michigan, upstate New York, down through southeast Richmond, Charlotte, and then... When is that? Uh, September, October. We're going back hard. Chaley and I are putting the band back together, man. I might be back in the U.S. by then, so I might even fucking tag along for Drop one. in. Yeah. That'd be Please great. do. We do have to mention that uh, during the Vegas tapings, totally sold out, sold out. We're down at the plaza. Yeah. Uh, When's she, that? The, uh, next weekend is next the week. 24th and 25th. I will be selling shot glasses. I'll have them on my person. It's very discreet. <laughs> it will be cash only, and it's $5 a shot glass. If you have not making any change, if you hand me a twenty dollars, you're getting four shot glasses, or I get a big tip. <laughs> oh, and you, uh, how much uh, for sucking nicks and kissing babies? Well, that's your job. It won't be until you meet us. Oh, roaster! Sucking babies, dicks. I <laughs> yeah. suck dicks and kiss babies, and I'm all out of babies. <laughs> uh, how depressing is it that we can't sell like our actual content anymore, and people want t-shirts and bumper stickers of us? Oh, it's yeah. great. It's okay. It's yeah. great. <laughs> I, I, I held off out. for years and I've finally given in. Uh, you can get my stuff at brennanburns.net. That's B R E N D. Yeah, because if I go to brennanburns.com, that's what I get. Fuck yeah, suck dicks, kiss babies. And that cunt wants fucking 800 quid for that. He can piss off. How much is 800 quid? Uh, about $1,000. That's it? Yeah. Joe Rogan is joerogan.net exactly. because there's a Joe Rogan real estate agent. Yeah. And I Who go, what? Die? What? Why, why don't you just fucking sick your fans on him and make him give up? <laughs> but that guy would, of course, go, do you have any idea how much traffic I get? Like, that's why he wouldn't give yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I know, but... Well, that, this was back in the day. But let's face it. Yeah, back in the actually. day, he could... Like, what we do with killer termites. So, and a s- fan s- of... Send our fans... A like, fan of Mitch <laughs> Make him capitulate. A fan of Mitch Hedberg's owned MitchHedberg.com. And he... Mitch didn't know anything... Didn't know what was going no, on. No, this with is that. like very early and, internet days. And then it, it was Smacky the Frog was his big thing at the time. And then they let it lapse. And then when I got connected with Hedberg, the, the it was dot net. And he goes, how how come I can't get dot com? I go, well, because you let it, you didn't answer an email. I don't fucking know. But they wanted five to ten thousand dollars to arbitrate uh. to do it. And I go, if I put in Google, actually it was Ask Jeeves at the time, Mitch Hedberg. The second, third thing that comes up is is MitchHedberg.net. So why do we spend the money to yeah. get – it doesn't fucking matter. Fucking – It did back then. It, well, it kinda. may have back then. It doesn't matter now. This is a proof positive for me that I always defend him when people slag off Michael McIntyre because he used to open for me and he would crack me up in the car. This is a bit that he never did. But he goes uh, – because it's filthy, right? And he goes, I asked that ass Jeeves. Dot com. I had a look at him. He's nice and prim, brother. And uh, I wanted to ask him, are you gay? Right? And that was the, the premise all it had. And I wanted him to t- do the tag of going, let me tell you, the dances Jeeves came up with, Jeeves is really gay. <laughs> How many times? I've got, I've got gay friends that came around and they're the cleanest people on earth. They want to put a coaster. And I'm like, never mind that. You're putting your face in an asshole. <laughs> you do the filthiest thing on earth. Never mind the poof. <laughs> You've got shit in your mustache. And I'm like, and I'm begging him to do it. And he's like, I can never do that. How many times have you had a clean comic oh. that, again, green room rules yeah. where everything, you, the cleanest fucking Brian Regan guy will tell you a fucking off color joke. Hey, you could probably use this in your act. How many times have you? <laughs> Which also. What their version of you is, of like not realizing the thought that goes into it. And it's like, ah, yeah. oh, I got a thing about fucking this celery looks like a cock. When I was hosting the 11 o'clock show, there was a, another comic wrote a joke for me. It was after Michael fucking Hutchins from NXS died. Yeah. And he goes, you'll love this joke. Uh, celery looks like a cock. And I was like, what do you think I do? <laughs> What happens when I speak? <laughs> what do you hear? Do you just think I'm up there just going, cut, 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 
political statement. Cunt! <laughs> Cunt, cocksucker! Fucking! I fucked my ass with my own shit! Uh, <laughs> although, admittedly, that's me doing an impression of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, yes, my plugs, you can go to brennanburns.net and uh, follow us on Twitter. But also, now that I'm in America, I think a lot of my albums are now available at Sirius XM on Raw Dog. You can request them there. You can get my entire back catalogue at brennanburns.net. I will, I, albums, seven. I will uh, double down on that. You know what? When you request our shit on XM Sirius Raw Dog Radio, yeah, we get residuals so please do and if they're playing i i don't there's a request line i think like people request it and the more like i'm making i'm living off an album from 2003 right now that seems to have got some traction doing quite well that's why you're begging bananas from us <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> but no it's a nice fat fuck we don't get the royalties back home and like a fuckwit i signed away so i suppose and i can't get it back that's yeah, the- please do. And please uh, ask for a uh, new shit from me because last I heard, they're playing like 1999 album shit of mine. That's because they have to pay more for the later later ones. And the later ones. Hey, who? Uh, uh, those bits are 22 minutes. You and your people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. But you can My shave people. it into three. Our people. My people. You can shave it into three. You better apologize to Yamanika for that. <laughs> and... uh or Pandora and Spotify, it's all available there now. And I'm getting my finger out of my ass, and it's, everything will be up there pretty soon. If not, you can also uh, purchase from me direct at brendanburns.net. 14 albums, seven specials, just sixteen pounds forty, which I think is about twenty fucking bucks. It's two hundred bucks worth of stuff. Don't be a cunt. And selfies in the Grand Canyon, the very special uh, where I did secret location tours with John Hastings and spray painting fuck off on a dead wombat are available in the U.S. across Europe and Japan. Uh, uh, for the first time on Amazon Prime Video, or you can buy them direct from me. All right. And my book on Amazon. Which I have the last copy of, which I will read and then put in my next eBay yard sale. Yeah. Fear, Fear of Hat Loss in Las Vegas, the story of when Paul Provenza, Barry Castellano, and myself went to Vegas in pursuit of a photograph, and Doug featured very heavily on that trip. I can't wait to look, uh, read the chapters that are about me and then put that on eBay yard sale. <laughs> you won't, though. I reckon you'll read it. I, I, my, my book. Uh, Mum? No, the f- second one. This is not fame. Yeah, I, I did a lot of name dropping in that. And even those people didn't care to read really? the parts about <laughs> themselves. <laughs> they, they, they just read the bits about themselves and didn't finish the book. No, they didn't even do the reading the parts. <laughs> For fuck's sake. See what I mean? It's fucking no altruism. It's rough. People don't watch each other's hours here. I have uh, my Netflix is loaded, but I'm taping the special in Vegas. And if someone did a bit that's close to mine, I would go, oh, fuck. I would just f- free fall into, oh, they said the same word and now I can't do it. And I don't want to David tell this bit. <laughs> What's David tell this bit? David tell. Uh, Panics. Oh, he rings people up asking yeah, if they do, do something you, similar. Yeah. So if he heard one word, I don't want to do that. And there's a, a lot of. It's a different bit. Comedy fans now want to pretend they understand comedy <laughs> better than they do. So they dob people in. And they're going, you did a thing that you, you, you talked about supermarkets. Porn. Fuck That's it. the one I get. Uh, oh, he did a bit about porn or midgets or something. Like, yeah, it's a whole different shut the fuck up. That was uh, kind of a, an ancillary problem with the Joe Rogan, Carlos Mencia beef, where the, the general social media public thought they're comedy police. Oh, Artie Lang did a thing about midgets. I go, yeah, it's a, it's a, not a hard premise. Like, shut the cre- fuck up. But we did create the golem ourselves. What was it? It used to be that the secret of comedy was the fact that it was a secret. And now we all go on fucking podcasts, tearing apart our fucking process so much, opening up the sausage. And then we bitch when people feel like they know what they're fucking talking about. True enough. But that's us in a nutshell. Want to be taken seriously and don't want to be taken seriously. Hey, we're an enigma. <laughs> fucking look out. Uh, fucking. So, mushroom flashback. So. Oh, we uh, we have one more. Go. Yeah. I was going to close this up. No, no, no. So I'm like, getting confused. I've got to tell you about last night. So, yeah, weirdly enough, like, uh, sorry if I've kept my distance, but I needed to get some sanity. Was, for some reason, when I get around you, and I don't know if it's the parallel thinking 
uh, the overlap of stuff or whatever. Like, so there's very similar speech patterns in what we do. We have a stammer. It's very similar. And there's some stuff that we've had that's just almost word for word and we weren't even aware of one another, right? And uh, then I come into Bisbee last night and I haven't had a Mushroom DMT flashback in fucking ages. Like I said, the last one I had was at my wedding and that was a positive, pleasant experience. But maybe because I was tired and I was rushing to get here, this was not the positive one. This was the DMT one. Which is, remember how I said in the last podcast that sometimes I would invent things and for some reason it would go into memory. And when I did hallucinogenic- This is, this is the same podcast, by the way. Oh, I thought we were doing part two. No, no I'm going to do part two, do part two oh, myself. Do a two hour podcast, right? No, this is- This is going to be two hours, right? This one's- uh, And that, like, the thing, okay, I'm going to do a bit of shtick now. There's a special I did where I tried to explain it, like what hell in the human brain can be like. And, uh, it's that you, there's a blinding white light and you, uh, everything's blurry. And then you see, and, and you're looking at the eyes of your dad, only as a much younger man, which you find particularly perplexing because you remember being on your deathbed only seconds earlier. And then you try and voice this and all you hear is a child's wail. And then you try and voice it again and the wail gets louder. And then you look around and it becomes very familiar settings and, uh, uh, and you cry and you cry and you cry because you realize you're about to commit every single fucking mistake you ever made. And you're going to do it all over again. And you can't stop any of this for eternity because you know in foresight that you will care that much. And then the doctor spanks your ass and the memory banks are wiped. And I was like, and hell is every time you take hallucinogenic drugs, you vaguely remember being that baby. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and I remember you talking about DMT, the negative uh, version of it, of reality stripping away isn't always good. I, uh, I will, uh, I uh, explained it as imagine if uh, you smoke some shit with Joe Rogan and then immediately you realize you're a rat. Living a rat's life. That eats garbage and you're nothing but a rat. And then eight minutes later, you come out of this and you can't forget that you're just a rat, but you still have to live out the rest of your life knowing that you are just living garbage. Which is why New York must terrify you. (laughs) They're like going, oh, more proof. Right. <laughs> and so LA has been driving me a bit nuts. I moved, I moved to a farm myself as well and kind of isolated, uh, which I think was also a mistake. Comics still need to be around other comics. And, uh, That's what I miss the most living here. Uh, it's the only thing I miss. But then Love. people come out and stay with you, don't they? Yeah. Comics, Basically. I know, but I don't know anything that's going on. Uh, but that's the same conversation over and over. But the funny thing, like sometimes I would go to New York. And then be the same three blokes out the front of the cellar having the same conversation they were when I was there three years ago. And I'd go, Oh, fuck. They haven't reset the program yet. Right. Like, and then things start to get more variable when I'm there longer, but I shit you not like verbatim. Like it's the Steve Fabricant guy, uh, the bloke that stands out, does, uh, stands know. out the front of the door. Don't know shit. Someone asked him who his favorite comic is. And he says, a tell. And he says it the same way every time. And, every, and, and I do that. Of, uh, but uh, I mean, I arrive at the cellar. Someone's asking him who his favorite comic is, and he goes, Atel. And it's like, it's, it's almost like fucking clockwork when I arrive. And I'm like, oh, reality slipping. And so when I drive through the fucking mountain on my way to your mate's gig last night, and I'm heading to the Stanhope compound, and uh, almost like a, a bit of a touchstone. You're a bit of a touchstone when it comes to this blurred reality uh, to me. Like sometimes when I like, I feel weird staring straight in your face. Uh, and, but I feel like you do as well. Like you uh, at first, do you? Well, I, well, I have to drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I said that. Oh, Burns is coming. I'm going to have to drink. Yeah. Get me tacos. I have to eat before I drink. Well, apparently I make a lot of sense if you take mushrooms. Like I would happily drive people around on mushrooms. I, I am way more coherent if you've done hallucinogens. Uh, like, oh, right. Okay. And uh, so then I'm about to do a gig. It ain't podcast worthy. No, no, yes. exactly. Yeah, we could do mushrooms. And uh, well, if Ari Shafir wants to do that shroom fest, like people do a, like a, a gig, 
like an actual gig. I was like, I'll drive the bus. No worries. But this time, the blurred reality started to strip away as I came through the tunnel. And then I look at Bisbee. And to try and describe Bisbee to you, it looks like the beginning. Well, look at Doug's place. It looks like the beginning of Mushrooms. And Bisbee looks like something trapped in fucking time. Everything's super clean and pristine. It looks like the opening, uh, the, the town main drag looks like the opening gates of Disneyland, the whatever fucking Foreverland or something. When you first walked in. Main Street. Main Street in Disneyland looks exactly like Bisbee. And you're like, oh, this is trippy. It looks like a train set. Yeah. And then there's a bloke who's dressed like a fucking demon magician and some other cunt was juggling fire at me. And uh, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then reality started to slip away. And I'm in the middle of a process right now that is me undoing some other damaging behaviors. And I hadn't gone and meditated yet. And I need to see rolling fields and rocks and shit like really old rock formations just to kind of reset same-wise. So all of that's gone, and Charlie's, Charlie's going, mate, you're on in 20. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to have to have a shower. Uh, I, uh, and I'm just trying to return to fucking Earth. To be you, fair, you, I was you, pretty you, calm you, because you were pretty frantic and I didn't want to, you, I didn't want it to be. Yeah, like, you, you were showering anything. at showtime. Yes, because I just like thought See? I can't be rushed. No, and I thought I was very cognizant of that. I tried to say- You're amazing. That's what we're going to- He's worth his weight in gold, mate. He's the, he should fucking- I, Who are your top five best friends? Catherine Bertine. No! Is my number one she's the no- the best she's friend forever. She's the top three, What has actually. she done? What has she done? Listen, uh, sometimes you, uh, uh, you say a joke and you commit to it for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, that's true. And uh, she's, she's proved her metal. I fucking- when I, after I got stung by a stonefish in February, my agent goes, only you, only you could fucking send this email saying you can't get this sent yet because you got stung by the world's most lethal fish. <laughs> All right? And I went, what do you mean only you? My wife's like, you're kidding me, right? I was like, no, what? And she's like, Jesus Christ, the day you embrace how fucking ridiculous you are, you're going to be a millionaire, right? <laughs> but she's like, you're like, uh, you're a cartoon of a fucking, like, what? And I was like, well, I hope if I'm fucking event, when I eventually fucking die, I hope you all appreciate in hindsight how much I spent my entire life in fucking character because this shit's <laughs> exhausting. It's exhausting. But to get into you. The- it's uh, exhausting me. Uh, how you're close to my age. When you come up with the, the best friend, who's your best friend? Because we've spent our lives calling someone our best friend. And then invariably you fall out with them because there's too much pressure on it. But they were, but then there's some of them that will get upset if you say you have a new best friend. So that's why a lady I met for 15 minutes at an airport bar that doesn't drink and she's everything I'm not. I go, okay, do you want to be best friend? She goes, okay. And we're doing that. She is my best friend. I'm telling her shit I would never tell anyone else. And yeah, who's my best friend? Probably Greg Chaley. Or actually even more so Tracy, because I'll tell Tracy shit. I won't tell Greg Chaley because Greg Chaley doesn't want to fucking know. <laughs> and he has to share a hotel room with you from time to time. He probably figures Time to out. time. No, because we, we sometimes we share towels. I have a I a, <laughs> Whoa! That's intimacy. I have a I have a That's bit in the new cheap. special about that. So I'm not gonna go into it, but about how yeah. I spend the least money on hotels when it comes to the road because I'm just going to pass out there for six hours. And who gives a fuck if it's shitty? I love that. That's why I squander. Doug Doug and I never talk unless there's a microphone on our face. But the fact how cheap we live on the road is a means to the end. Our our focus – I don't know. I talked to Bingo about this. I talked to Tracy about this. Our focus on the road – is to get off the fucking road. We go and do our shows. There's no fucking frills. There's no fucking uh, catering. Like we bring we our own bar. We find thrift stores and sushi bars to kill time before we have to go and do a show that we want to put on the best fucking show we want. The best show we can possibly put on is the one you're going to see tonight. But then when we're done, we fucking come back here. I was going to say, how this much? This is where we come back. Would to. you stay here if you could and just not? I, that's all I do. Go on the road. 
No, That's I mean, how much would you not go on the road if you could I just, just I just took park? nine months off, and I'm only going back. This special was ready last July, Ooh. and I was so burned out from international travel that I'm like, fuck comedy. You're I don't care. Well, no, I'm a great you're flyer. The oh, I don't, yeah, I actually, I'll Do tell you. Do you fly business? It depends. Only when he's slumming. Oh, hang on. <laughs> That's right. You went to Singapore, didn't you? And that bloke put you on Air Asia's business class. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's this, amazing. This, this, is, this is bits. That Once I get coming. done the old bits that I'm going to put on this special, then I'll come back to the whole fucking Singapore, fucking Southeast Asia. Let me, let me That's going to be it. Don't, don't misinterpret what I said as we don't like being on the road. We hotels. We specific. love being on the road. Ever the I diplomat. Mean, we love our I'm, fan base. No, we love being on I'm, the road. Say, I never I say that. I love driving. I never say that. I abuse them at all costs. Tracy and I drive the the van in gold. Worth his weight in gold. You're fucked without him. <laughs> You're fucked without him. It's. Uh, I'm not placating. He's anyone. got one I'm job. Saying, I fucking love being on the road. I love doing it, but I also know that it's taxing. And when we're gone, we want to be back here. It's not discounting what we're doing or where we're going. I fucking love it. I, I couldn't understand. imagine doing anything else. I, I, I was in a band. We're old years people. I a, yeah, I live on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Oh, uh, in Asia. Yeah, yeah. in uh, like, but we had to lie about even the the shire, the not shire, shire. fucking. Well, actually, my address does sound like. <laughs> well, like there's not many shires in Asia. <laughs> the the, <laughs> the borough because we got like death threats after a scouser routine went viral. Well, we'll cut all this. Let's just say I live on a farm in the middle of nowhere, a working farm, and uh, yeah, I got too fucking lazy as well. I only played to my people. Was only doing DIY, but also UK is a smaller marketplace, so you can only survive for five years. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I have it made. I have. Exactly the amount of fan base and ticket buyers that will fit our lifestyle. Yeah. Manageable fame. Oh, touring with Mick Foley. I was like, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be fucking Mick Foley famous. Because also wrestler famous is different. Because, oh, yeah. because it's, I, I, I bet, I bet it's, a, I bet there's a lot of crossover. Oh, mate. <laughs> I think there's a ton. They're, they're, oh, huge. They're the yeah. same people. They are exactly mentally the same people as us. I do a double act with uh, Colt Cabana. Oh, I should throw a plug out. Colt Cabana and John Hastings. John Hastings has taken my place at Edinburgh Festival this year, doing co- uh, comedy and commentary to bad wrestling matches. Fun show. Don't need to be a wrestling fan to enjoy it. Go and see it. I'm plugging them. And uh, But they're the same mental state. It's the same lifestyle. It's also the actual structure of the match is very similar to what we do. They We have bits. The same shit every night. They have spots. They ve- they do vary with different people when they're working with different people. They have we have closes. They have finishing moves. How how uh you, obviously you've watched the wrestler. How close is that to accurate? Because uh, that's one of my favorite the movie movies. With Mickey Rourke. Uh, yeah, I've asked a few of the guys, and they're like a bit depressed how accurate it is. <laughs> like there's a scene that, that is li- completely lifted from Beyond the Mat where they wow. interview Jake. Oh, like, wow. whoa! Wow. You oh, wow. hang on, high five. <laughs> you are maybe the only person I know that's also seen Beyond the Mat. Oh, I love what's, that. What's what's the uh, what's the scene that was stolen? Because I have no retention, but that was. 15 years ago, maybe, that I saw that documentary. It's Jake the Snake talking to his daughter. Oh. oh. Yeah. And it's lifted. No, no it's not. Wait, no, him. he didn't talk to his daughter. He was supposed to talk to his daughter and they got footage. No, did he? No, did he, he ended up in front of her and she tells oh. him off. All right. And then he goes, I'm so sick of hurting. And he starts crying. He and was smoking goes, crack yeah, when he was goes, supposed to. Crocodile tears. Like, this is oh, a, just wow. another fucking. But he's sober now, bless him. DDP yoga, baby. That guy's helped a lot of people. But uh, uh same self-destructive, like, uh, and really sensitive. Like, it's I've never met a wrestler that wasn't hard to hurt their feelings. And, uh, but protect themselves with a character uh, or an onstage persona. But wrestler fame is different to regular fame in that it's the difference between meeting Christian Bale and the real fucking Batman. All right? <laughs> so... Grown men, when their 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 action figures come to life, like other famous people, lose their shit around them. Uh, and it's I remember like and Foley's such a polite, lovely bloke that sometimes he just treats it like it's a nervous mm. tick. 
Like he thinks it's him that's doing it. Like he's out with his family. He's like, thanks very much. Sorry. Thanks very much. Sorry. And they're like, and because he's the everyman character as well, people cross the street and, holy fucking shit, Mick Foley. And also they threw him off a fucking cell. The guy's really sore. Grown men want to hug from him. And it's also... Well, I thought that's the guy that died. No, no. No. They, well, there's a lot that died. No, and beyond the mat, there was the one that died jumping off a fucking two-story no, thing. No, 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 that's Mick Foley. He's not dead. Oh, oh, he's not dead? Who was and- the guy that died? That was a, that was a, that was a cage match. A lot of people f- died. No, he All fell right. on a, it was a big, you know, the, the, Mick Foley is a guy who, he's doing stand-up now, like you said. He's in Beyond the Mat. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he wasn't supposed to be famous. The Beyond the Mat was going to be a struggling indies guy, and he got brought up to the big dance. And that's actually why he kind of changed his whole stick a bit. But also- well, he, You went into Mankind, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah. also, he was Mankind, but then it was like, uh, because they showed him video of his kids watching him get big uh. to shit, and then he was like, I'm going to fuck it and change. And he's good, you know, he's a good dude, and he, he, one of his pet peeves is wrestlers that go on the road and do stand-up without putting the work in. You know, and our- I, there's a, there's a bunch of yeah. Twitter backlash about Brendan Schaub, MMA fighter, who now has a Netflix special, mm. uh, doing stand up. Cause there's a lot of those guys. And you know, I, I've seen tweets. Yo, oh, you, you didn't put the time in. Well, if people are watching you, this, it's like, he didn't take your spot. <laughs> exactly. Back when Carrot Top, if you're that old, Carrot Top got lots of shit. Like, really? Uh, is someone flipping a coin between seeing me yeah. and Carrot Top? Probably not. There Once again, a, you're, or you're Jeff catering to your audience Dunham because Peanut. you know your audience. Don't bring a friend because you want to discover comedy for the first time. No. Doug, Get a ramp. Doug, Doug knows who should be coming in. You want a ramp. You I always get a couple of comics under your belt. But we, uh, we had a, in Nashville, we had to follow a YouTube sensation. Oh, He's the one that uh, actually, grandma's- he actually oh, talked oh, shit oh. at, at the Montreal Comedy Festival, oh, I kid. think. Yeah. He oh, talked shit. I feel for him because he was bombing and he didn't know what to do. But oh. the, the point is, <laughs> well, it's when we were in the 90s, how does he have chops? He came backstage at, at the show. Cato yeah. Caitlin did comedy. There's a million 15 minutes of fame people that went into comedy because they thought that was easy. The next thing. It's like but, Mick but gives me credit for They're being- not stealing our tickets. Mm. No. Mm. And Mick gives me credit for being his mentor and that's very kind, but that's overstating the case because to be honest, when I was working with him and just discussing, because basically it's just, they just do the opposite of what they do. In wrestling, it's you hide the negatives, accentuate the positives. Sounds like in stand-up, just flip it. It's you accentuate the negatives and hide the positives. No one wants to hear you brag, right? And uh, but You honest, should write a uh, how-to-do comedy book for people who- Done wrestling. <laughs> don't, very, don't know how to do comedy, but you're famous for something else. But they're very- Well, the weird thing is with wrestlers, it's a very- We're very, very close bedfellows, and it's easy. They're easy to explain it to. Because once you say that, then they're like, oh, right, just do the opposite of everything I always did. <laughs> and But to be honest, that like I said, him calling me his mentor is too complimentary. That's overstating it. It's When I spoke to him when he first came in and we would talk about and work on his hour and stuff, I would talk to him the same way I would speak to someone who'd been doing it for 10 years because that's, that's just where he was in terms of understanding structure and, and building to crescendo and pull back and reveal. And he's a best-selling author, so he already knew all of that shit. And his last special was <coughs> fucking great. Um, and it's more, he's a raconteur. He doesn't call himself a stand-up. And so people say he's doing stand-up. It's not really. It's Mick Foley. I'm a humorist. Oh, those cunts after dinner speakers. <laughs> we got them fucking in the UK, and they dare to be snooty. I fucking, there's one bloke who's a lawyer turned comic, and he's like, just because he went to the right school, because BBC is all fucking Oxbridge and Cambridge cunts. And you'll have a bloke that isn't fit to shine your fucking shoes. Uh, there's a, a bloke, I can't remember what his name is. His opener is, I know what you're thinking. Uh, that, uh, blank famous person has let himself go. And it's like, and the people are like, oh, 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 terribly with you. Terribly with you. <laughs> and it's like, if I open with that and this motherfucker, I remember he was explaining one of my bits to me and I was like, we ain't fucking peers, mate. <laughs> you're an after dinner speaker. Don't explain my fucking, <laughs> if I open with, the shit that you do, I'd be destroyed. I have to, f- my stuff has to be so much smarter than yours. But to even be allowed 
I know what you're thinking. Uh, that famous bloke that looks a bit like me has fucking fucked some AIDS, hasn't he? Blah, blah, blah. What? Uh, hey, you know what I'm thinking. What number am I thinking of? Uh, nine. Fuck you. Come on! You got it right. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Told you, we're joined at the hip, baby. Yeah, Mashika. He's right. Level. <laughs> Is it true? Was I? No. No. Oh, uh, oh wait to blow up the bit, Brendan. Fuck it. It was a callback right there. Oh. I was a callback to Yamashika. And when's your favorite taping next Yemen- week? Nisha? Yeah, Yamanika. Yeah, all right. All right. Now. It's probably best not to whatever her name right now. Yeah, she, she, right, she already tuned out after I apologized to her on this podcast if she was listening, which she would. Ego, <laughs> Ego's a motherfucker. Wait, is this live? Yeah. No. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Is it live? No, fuck no. Oh, thank fuck. <laughs> when I said the thing, but it's over. Uh, it's yeah, over. Yeah. I have to do my own podcast. Yeah, I had my notes. I thought we could work this in, but you destroyed this podcast. So, uh, in yeah, the, good in a good, good way. In a good oh. way. Yeah. But you just, I got a fucking strong story for the uh, part two. Okay, I'll shut the fuck up. No, uh, thank you so friend. much for doing this, Doug. Uh, my people have been nagging me for years to fucking come out and see you. And I'm gonna. I dealt with the fucking uh, flashback, and went up the mountain and fucking. Uh, you know, you you sent me the weirdest email. I have to go throw rocks at something. I have to throw uh, shit out of my head at some rocks like an ape. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant. I got a trash can in my head, and so you nice. walked in through the desert uh, here. Go walk about, yeah. Someone like someone in town last night told you to a go. trail to take, right? Yeah, yeah. And did you? Why didn't that? Gump tell him to fucking take Henry Phillips down the fucking dog trail? <laughs> take the dog with you. We have we have, we have mountains, stone mountains. We make the little things mm. at the end. Gump's probably never been there. So, uh, Brendan, I have to ask you one thing: How was your uh, your show at, at Chuckleheads? I have zero faith in my perspective on that gig. Oh. Because, well, great people, though. But it was also very much like an Outback comedy pub. And right. It was very similar to that story that I told you that's in the book about my favorite death story ever, about the Outback guys getting oh, bombing. You haven't given me the book yet. I know, but, uh, well, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to give anything away, but I told that story last night to that audience. As I said, these Bisbee Arizonians are the most Aussie, they're most like Aussies I've ever encountered in that. They helped me communicate. It was a really useful gig. And Becca wants me back as soon as July. I'm going to so bring a bunch you're of You're rebooking. Back. You're rebooking. I'm, I'm going to come back before I leave uh, and do a show. Because I didn't Great. do a show last night. I just rambled. But people seem to like it. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Because they were just good eggs. Bisbeeites are easily swindled. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. I think there's a certain level. I'll say it. <laughs> there's a certain level of decency. I think if I turn right up- there, that's uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you want to, when you come back, I taped Papa Vodka Presents on that stage, and all these chairs come out, and we put you know twenty five people in here, and this is a fucking great. The, we've never had a bad show here. You did the No Place Like a Home. That special was taped here. Just same no, 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 same no, no. That's in Old Bisbee, but we taped one here Friday night. Here we did it. Saturday night we did the just playoff. tape to see if it would work, and we put uh, you have twenty five people in here, and twenty five people in here is a party. It was thirty seven. Yeah. It was thirty seven and a three camera shoot. That's the thing I discovered of the on the road is like fifty people in a four hundred seater is fucking horrifying. Fifty people in a forty seater is a <laughs> fucking party. Yep, yeah. and, and then, that's what we got. Fuck yeah! And you're taping. Uh, we do it like yeah. just all right. It's nine thirty. Some comics are driving through town, going from Austin to L.A. We're on the way. They stop in. And then we go, all right, you're doing a show right now. And Chaley hits the mic. That's and we awesome. move those chairs that way. And you put 10 behind the bar, 10 on the floor, 10 in the front row. I got to come back for sure and bring foreigners with me. Oh, by the way, Please no do. spitting. No spitting. I'm we are from that's, Aussie. That's the Chinese. No spitting. No spitting? <coughs> What's he doing? Chinese. What's happening? Chinese spit. <laughs> He's seeing Australia. Way, this was most of my set last night. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this was like. I said uh, jumper. Pull the thread on a jumper. And then the Aussie lady, Neela, mm-hmm. goes, sweater. And I just like snapped. And I was like, just fucking meet me halfway, <laughs> cunt. Look at the context. You know what? 
You know the term pull the thread on a sweater? So ha- I- Hennigan would force me to like not do the like, oh, they w- won't understand this. No, that's half the allure. Yeah. When I'm in Edinburgh, I yeah. talk like I talk. Don't try to talk like they talk. When you're here, they want to figure it out. Like well, no, a that, simpleton's so jeopardy. Of American films, so they know American uh, Americanisms and American words for things. That's like, very interesting. But here, that won't yeah. play. My no. jumper smells like a pack of fags. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the producer. Ah, and you're fucking, you're you fucking you like, gonna bum it? a fag? Huh? And it doesn't mean fuck a gay bloke in his ass properly. It doesn't mean sort of Spartan out and fuck Creed over. It means a cigarette, hey? <laughs> and then when you go to India, don't point out how many cows there are. Because they're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> and you're like, fuck me, there's a lot of cows in the street. Yeah, we fucking know. It's India. Shut up. <laughs> everywhere has I will rain. never go to India everywhere has the especially rain. after this special comes out that I film next week in Vegas next week I might even come up to Vegas next week and see it let's get the fuck out of here Doug stand up thanks very much thank you Brendan Burns Burnsy it's been a long time get, get everything you want on brendanburns.net mm-hmm and get everything you want from Doug on DougStanhope.com. Thanks, Prince, I think. God bless you. Thank you, gentlemen. Click. Boom. Let me get the fuck out of your hand. <laughs>